At the end of his wits, Damien petitions cheaters to undertake an unpleasant task. Damien Borchard, age 34, a snowboard instructor concerned that his girlfriend's recent evasive behavior may be evidence of betrayal. I, I'm not seeing her as much as I used to. Um, I don't feel as close to her as I used to. And, but at the same time, I send her money and I, I call her and I, you know, we still have this um, plan of moving in together that we're working for and I'm working for. And, but uh, I don't want to say I, I don't trust her, but she makes it difficult for me to believe her sometimes with some of the reasons she comes up with why we can't see each other. It just, they don't make sense sometimes, you know? I mean, I used to be, I'm the guy who, I'll drive in and see her for six hours and drive home happily, and now the, the, there's no time for that. She's always too busy with work or with something, and it's down to where I, I'm lucky if I see her three three times a month. After, you know, trying to get in touch with her all day and finally getting a hold of her and, you know, having plans to come in the city uh, and then to have them changed for a flimsy excuse, I I haven't lost my temper outright, but, you know, we've we've gotten to the point where we, we, we have arguments now over the phone instead of seeing each other. And, and it's just, you know, I just want to know what's wrong. I want to know what's really going on. I mean, I, I've put so much into this relationship and uh, I, think I, I think I'd think i be physically ill if I found out that she was cheating. Just the, just the idea, honestly, makes me sick, you know? And that she couldn't be honest with me about it if, if she didn't want to see me anymore. I just, uh, I already, it already has affected me. I, I hardly sleep, you know? I, I just, I've never loved somebody as much as I love her, you know? If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Kate Swanson, age 27, a waitress suspected of hiding a secret lover from her longtime boyfriend. Investigation day two. In position at the suspect's residence, cheaters field agents man their posts, anticipating probable action. Without warning, suspect Kate Swanson emerges from her apartment while talking on her cellular phone. With cheaters agents following close behind, suspect Swanson takes an extended walk to an area near the city's waterways. With a swing in her step, suspect Swanson makes a beeline to a park bench, where an unidentified gentleman awaits her arrival. The two apparently are more than just acquaintances. The unknown fellow plants a big kiss on suspect Swanson. Cheater's operatives move forward, spotting suspect Swanson and her companion hand in hand, advancing to the subway, where they take a trip to a nearby park. After a short stroll, the two stop on a bridge and share a few kisses before carrying on with their nature walk. Moments later, suspect Swanson leads her companion to a secluded spot where the two enjoy a little more private time together. Temporarily satisfied, the lovebirds finally leave the park and head to an exclusive department store back in the city. A while later, suspect Swanson and company leave the store and walk to a nearby subway station. Not wanting the good times to end, suspect Swanson grabs a few more kisses before bidding her companion farewell. Investigation Day 3. While in pursuit of suspect Swanson, cheaters detectives remain cautious at all times to avoid any unwelcome attention. After exiting the subway, suspect Swanson takes a short walk to a nearby cafe. Upon arrival, suspect Swanson greets her companion, now positively identified as Eric Randall. Companion Randall surprises his lunch date with a forceful kiss after the two sit down for a hot meal. Blushing from all the attention, suspect Swanson settles in for some casual conversation. After lunch, the two walk several blocks to a popular music store. Without making a purchase, suspect Swanson and companion Randall advance across the street to a head shop. 
Several minutes later, the giggling couple emerges from the store with an unidentified item. After packing it away, companion Randall slaps suspect Swanson on the fanny on their way to a nearby bar. When the drinks arrive, the two share a toast, followed by a lengthy smooch. A long while later, suspect Swanson and companion Randall leave the bar and head for his residence. The duo disappears inside for a couple of hours before suspect Swanson decides to head back home. Investigation day five. Cheater's agents initially lose sight of suspect Swanson, but catch up with her as she walks through the busy streets. Much the prankster, suspect Swanson taps her new boyfriend on the shoulder and moves to the side before planting a big one on her unsuspecting companion. Ready for an eventful evening, the couple advances to a local bar to get the party underway. Just as they sit, suspect Swanson's camouflage-clad companion gets up to illustrate the proper way to treat a lady. Meanwhile, suspect Swanson demonstrates her inability to be forthright in this recorded phone call with Damien. With sufficient evidence in hand, Cheater's detectives close the case and make all necessary preparations for Damien. Coming up, the confrontation. With the verification of Kate's deception, Cheaters meets with Damien to discuss the essentials. Anxious to hear the final outcome, Damien puts his trust in Cheaters. Thanks for coming down as quickly. I know it's difficult, short notice, but we appreciate your attention. The reason that we did have you come down when we did, Damien, our detectives do have some information that you've asked us to compile. There's a potential that this may be disturbing and upsetting. Are you ready to take a look at some of this? Yeah. As the investigation starts, Damien, a detective observed Kate leaving her apartment. She's followed to a point where she meets an unknown gentleman. As you can see there, they share an embrace. From that point, they're followed on the train where they exit at a park. And as they get to this point on the bridge, you can see that they share a kiss there. And I know, I know that's not what you'd hope for. No, what you want to see. Not at all. They continue on from there, Damien. Stop and get some coffee. And at that point, she gets on a train and he gets in a cab. On this day, Damien, Kate meets this gentleman yet again. They stop for a drink. From there, they go back to his apartment again, Damien. And up until the time that the detective called it quits, she was still in. And we assume that she just spent the evening there. Well, I guess she did your job for me. <laughs> well, you know, and I know that this isn't pleasant and I know it's what you asked us to do, but again, it's not something that, that I really enjoy. Where does Kate think you are right now? She thinks I'm up, I'm home, that I'm home, and I'm upstate, you know? We know where Kate is, and she's not working. And she's now? not out with the girls. She's with this gentleman again. And what we can provide you is an opportunity to confront Kate face to face. That would be great. I'm gonna call the detective right now. Yeah, we just finished a client briefing. Tell me what you got. They're at a restaurant and bar that's just right down on the corner. 
They spent the whole afternoon together again. Okay. Yeah, he's no, he's doing okay, but you know, I think he's uh, anxious to get this part over with. Okay. Yeah, we'll just sit tight and wait and wait for your next contact. Okay. They're in the restaurant. It's just down the street. We have a detective that's inside. We've got another one that's outside, so we're, we have exits covered. Someone will come over and brief us, and then we'll figure out the best way to go forward from there. All right, gonna be okay? Yeah. All right, guys, get ready. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Let's go. They're at the front door. Guys, watch your step getting out in the street. She's got on a white, she's got a white jacket on. You see her? Right in front, they're right in front. Okay, guys, let's go. Watch your step. Stay with me, Damien. What's up, Kate? Kate? What's up? What you doing? Oh hey, dude. God. Oh God. Hey, Wait, back off, dude. Back. I want to talk to this girl. Dude. Come What's up, dude? Come on. 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 Come What's going on with this guy? I'm sorry, I was gonna tell you, I'm sorry. Coming up, the conclusion. What's going on with this guy? I'm sorry, I was gonna tell you, I'm sorry. You're gonna tell me when? When were you gonna tell me? No, who what? Why'd you tell huh? us all? When were you gonna tell me, honey? Um, huh? I call you up and hey. Come guys, I, I calm down. She's been dating him for um, years. Hey, 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 get easy, buddy. Hey, please. Hey, come on, come on. Stop it! It's okay. Stop it, please. I'm not kidding. Stop it. Just go away, dude. Just go away. All right. You go away. Go away. You don't even look like you're into chicks, man. You need to back off, bro. Gentlemen. You need to back off, Stop bro. It! I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I just want to talk to you. Can I talk to you? Can I, can without, you without can you guys stop guy fighting? Here? Is that possible Big for tough one guy. second? I'm leaving, Kate. You got a couple minutes. Yeah. What's up? I'm sorry. You, you couldn't just tell me. You can't just tell me? I was going to tell you. It was that hard? I was going to tell you. It was you. that hard? Yes, it was that hard. Why? Because Every week when I call you, oh, you got something to do. All you had to do is say, hey, Damien, I'm over it. I'm over you. I've been sending you money, honey. I'll give it back. I'm trying to get it back. I thought you wanted to live with me. I did. You I, did, but now you don't? I don't know anymore. Wait, yeah, I don't well, understand. What? I don't Try understand what? Out. What are you, crazy or something? Where all of a sudden you're insane? I'm confused. Confused about what? You either want him or you want me. It was that, it's that simple, you know? Let me talk to big tough guy for a second. Hey, tough guy. <laughs> Please make them stop. Big tough guy, keep him. He's all yours. Tough guy's all yours. Stop I didn't even want to do that. I didn't even want to do that, Joey. Okay. That's all right. I didn't want to get in That's all okay. that. Uh, you know what? Come on. Let's get you out of here. I just feel duped, man, you know? I feel duped. She it's broke right. my heart. I trusted her. I totally trusted her. After the confrontation, Damien accepts the truth and prepares to carry on with his life. Stay tuned as Cheaters announces his future endeavors. But now, please meet Denver Vincent, 
a gentleman caught carousing with an involved employee during office hours. Denver Vinson, age 32. Denver provides fodder for the age-old debate of avoiding romantic relationships with co-workers. Well, when I first seen the camera crews coming to the store, my first initial response was to get these guys out of my store. I thought, you know, maybe my customer was probably a little spooked by this, so, you know, I had to get these guys out of my store. So, me being in charge, I had to leave them out of my store, and that's what I did. I took them out to the street, and that's where everything blew up. <laughs> Excuse me, Cherry? Yes. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. It's your new boyfriend back there. What's up, dude? Just come holler at me, man. We understand that. Just come holler at me, man. Are you Denver? It's not gonna get out of hand. What's up, man? Huh? The camera out my face, dog. That's the chain you bought him with my money the other day? Y'all need to get these cameras out of my store. I knew she was with somebody, but the way she explained to me was that he was cheating on her, he would stay out late, he wouldn't come home, or maybe he was going to help a depressed friend, quote unquote. And I just felt at that point that, you know, he was no good for her. Oh, she get a bonus? Yeah, she getting a yearly bonus. Okay. Why don't she get Y'all need to leave the store. Okay, all right. We're on our way up. Wait, do, I'll do, walk do up on you, man. You knew that she was in a relationship Walk up on with me, him. dude. Yeah, I knew. Okay. You got, so you you got, you got my money around about, your uh, neck, chump. You're not taking care of her, right? You got my money around your neck. Tell, tell your boss to come outside. Derek, if you're watching out there, man, I apologize for what I did with your girl, but I don't apologize for the confrontation we had, bro. I'm still here whenever you're ready. both of us and I really need him right now and I'm three months pregnant and I've got a little ways to go and he's not being there for me like he was in the beginning. I found out about a month ago that he hasn't been going to work regularly like he normally does and he gets up and takes a shower right off the bat and just like jumps out of bed in a hurry to go. And then all of a sudden he's not at work when I call him at lunch. And I have no idea where he is or who he's with. Yes, it's been very stressful and I've been scared lately because stress, too much stress can cause a miscarriage and I don't need all the stress and I really want to find out what is happening and what's going on with Thomas. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Thomas Harris, age 32. A construction worker cleaning up his image to attract other women. Investigation Day 2. Cheater's Intelligence works in partnership with Tracy before proceeding to the home she shares with the suspect. Stationed outside the residence, Cheater's field agents spot an unknown individual leaving in Tracy's sports car. After a short trip to an unknown address, Cheater's PIs confirm the driver's identity as Tracy's fiance, Thomas Harris. Suspect Harris exits the vehicle and helps a young woman into the passenger seat of the sports coupe. Suspect Harris makes a stop at a convenience store for some gas and refreshments. Moments later, Suspect Harris moves eastbound to a superstore where Cheaters agents are able to gain further insight into Suspect Harris's relationship with his unidentified female passenger. Attempting to lift her spirits, Suspect Harris rolls his companion around in circles. Having cracked a smile, Suspect Harris and company head for the front entrance. The two browse for a while until the romantic fellow decides to seize the moment. With a bouquet in hand, Suspect Harris turns and presents the flowers to his companion, followed by a gentle kiss on the lips. With the temperature rising, the pair adjourns to Tracy's vehicle. 
Suspect Harris makes his way back to his companion's residence, where he remains for several hours. Investigation Day 5. Cheaters' operatives heighten their readiness at Suspect Harris's residence after Tracy informs investigators of his imminent departure. Minutes after receiving the phone call, Cheaters' investigators spot Suspect Harris leaving once again in Tracy's car. Shadowing his every move, Cheaters' mobile surveillance tracks Suspect Harris to the home of his female companion. After a short stint indoors, Suspect Harris reemerges with his companion, who is now identified as Barbara Stockton. The two load into Tracy's car and quickly speed away. Down the street, Suspect Harris and companion Stockton arrive at a local five and dime store. As the couple searches for something to buy, Suspect Harris frolics about with several props, hoping to draw some attention from his adoring audience. After a while, the couple takes to the road. And just around the corner, Suspect Harris continues his naughty behavior by running a stop sign. Spotting the infraction, a police cruiser stops Suspect Harris, where his smooth talk leads to a mere slap on the wrist. Following his brush with the law, Suspect Harris and companion Stockton leave for her dwelling, where he lingers for some time before leaving. Investigation Day 8. Cheaters' operatives follow Suspect Harris as he leaves his residence. Catching up to him en route, Cheaters' detectives remain a safe distance behind until his arrival at companion Stockton's abode. Despite the early morning hour, Suspect Harris and companion Stockton find cause to celebrate with a cooler full of spirits. Without a hint of guilt, Suspect Harris offers his excuses to Tracy, as evidenced in this recorded phone call. Ending their surveillance, Cheaters' PIs prepare to inform Tracy of Suspect Harris's impropriety. After the break, the confrontation. Having gathered sufficient proof of infidelity, Cheaters brings Tracy in to divulge the cold, hard facts. Considering the fate of her family, Tracy hopes for clarity in this time of confusion. Tracy, thanks for your attention and making yourself available to us. Um, we do have some severe weather, and there are specific reasons why we wanted to get to you as quickly as we have today. Our detectives do have information that they thought it was imperative that you see as quickly as possible. Are you ready to take a look at some of that? Yes. Okay. As the investigation starts, a detective follows Thomas as he leaves your home. On this particular day, rather than going to work, Thomas went to the home of this young lady. He takes her to a thrift store. Oh my gosh. You can see that he's gives her a bouquet of flowers and gives her a kiss. After that time, he takes her back home, drops her off, and he's on his way, no doubt, back home to you. Oh on this goodness. particular day, Tracy, he again leaves your home, goes again to the residence of this young lady. This is a nice day. They're sitting outside, and you can see from his behavior they're very comfortable with one another. He's showing off his skills uh, with her wheelchair. But you can see that this relationship is a little bit more than just friendly. I wouldn't expect this from someone who is expecting a child with another woman. After spending some time there, he loads his car back up. He had a nice chest with some refreshments and libations and then he heads back home or maybe now he's going to work the reason that we do have you here Tracy is you asked us 
to see if we can find out some information about your relationship. And we've provided you with that. But something else that we can provide you with is an opportunity to confront Thomas in the presence of this young lady. Excuse me, here's a detective. Yeah. Okay. okay there's a tornado that's been spotted. Is it on the ground? How far away? Okay, we're not far at all, okay? We're headed over there right now. We Listen, just let me talk with her, okay? I don't want to put the whole crew I'm and an expectant mother in this kind of danger. Tracy, I just want you to know, I mean, it's up, totally up to you what you want to do. The detective followed him to her house. They're still there now. Do you want to go there? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to know that the weather is pretty severe. Okay, we're under an overpass right now. Tornadoes have touched down. It's up to you. Do you want to go forward? Yes. Okay. I want to get this over with. Okay. We have a detective at the location, and he's telling us that people are packing up and leaving the location because of the weather. Obviously, they're trying to find some safer ground. The detective suspects because other people are leaving that they may leave also. What we're going to do is just get into position, and as soon as we see any kind of movement, that's when we're gonna go for it. Yeah. You got him? Okay, let's go. Move. All right, let's go. They're heading out the door right now. Hurry up. Let's make this happen. I see her car right there. Second one. Right there, right there. I got him. Stop right here. Thomas! What the hell are you doing? Thomas? What is going on? Who is this? I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Who is this? What is this? Baby, I'm sorry. Can you tell us what's going on? Coming up, the conclusion. What is this? Baby, I'm sorry. Can you tell us what's going on? No, How do you do, man? I'm Joey Greco Thomas. with Cheaters. Do you know that this woman Who is this lady is you're living pushing? with Thomas? I had no idea. What is the big deal? She's expecting. She's three months pregnant. Oh, what about gosh. the baby, Thomas? Baby, I'm sorry. I'm... What about us? Baby, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. What are you doing here? I was hanging out with her, baby. I'm sorry. I saw everything. It's gross. It's disgusting. You I owe me an explanation. Yeah, what is going on here? That's what I want to know. I want to know what's going on here. She didn't even know about you. I, well, Thomas, how did you meet? there for me. She's never... I come over here to help help her out with the trailer park and everything. And, and just one thing led to another, baby. Can I have another chance? One thing led to another? Yeah. You haven't park. spent time with the woman who's carrying your child. You don't go to the doctor with her. You ignore her. I mean, the moment that you found out that she was pregnant, this, you started you ignoring don't her. This, baby. You don't deserve me. You don't deserve any of this. Are you Why ready? Why are you doing this? Why? What? Why? She's pregnant. She's how, how many months pregnant are you? I'm three. Three months pregnant? How could you do that to that girl? Well, huh? ma'am, he was doing yeah, that to you know. as well, unfortunately. I know. But that's ignorant, man. That is straight up ignorant. Well, Thomas, what do you want to happen? I mean, you have two women that you have to apologize to, I think. At least, that we know of. Well, you live with this woman. Where is it that you think you're going to go? Someone besides here. Are you okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. All right, you just stay right there. No, we can't even talk about this. I don't even want nothing to do with you no more. I'm, it's oh, we'll over. Have someone take you wherever you need to go. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm, I'm on help her. You okay? That's it. Run! Run! I don't know if it's going to be okay for you to stay here with the weather the way it is. Um, Do you think you're going to be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. Let's, you know what? Let's get you back inside. No, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I got it. Yeah. Are you, you okay? Sure? Yeah. Your husband or whatever he is, you know, I'm sorry that this, I'm sorry about this. I had no idea about you. I had no idea at all. Oh. 
It's not your fault because you didn't know. It's all his fault. He's a chicken. Here. Is this your home right here? I'm okay. There you go. I'm okay right here. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be just fine. Well, let's get just, we'll just wheel you out of the mud. Okay. Okay. Where did he go? I don't know. Did he, he just ran. take off? He ran like a chicken. I'm okay. I'm just gonna sit out here and get some air because I'm really upset right now. Do you think that given the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation that you and Thomas could ever work anything out? No. No? No. The line is drawn. He's already done way Finished. too much. Over. It's over. I don't need that in my life. It's disgusting. Yeah, I agree. Following the confrontation, Tracy seeks out a new path for the future of her unborn child. Stay tuned as Cheaters uncovers her aspirations for positive resolution. But next, Cheaters presents Larry Mixon. Larry received an unexpected surprise from the father of his lover's child. Larry Mixon, age 29. Larry recalls the night that he and his former sweetheart were ambushed by a jealous boyfriend. It was a little crazy to me that I was actually on cheaters and that uh, that uh, somebody was cheating with somebody with me, you know. So it was just a little crazy. But uh, I just never thought it would happen to me. What, what are you doing? What's going on? I mean, what are you doing? Who is this? Are you what? cheating on him with cheating? this man? Can you explain what you've been doing? I mean, are you cheating? Me and you are not getting along. You're not helping me with the baby. I mean, I work, though, Tasha. I work. All you I do is work. You don't pay any attention to me. I raise the baby. I raise the baby by myself. No, you don't. I you work. You do not I help work. me at all. So what? Doesn't so, mean nothing. But I go to work. Okay, work yeah, you what, go what, to work, and then what do you do for me? What do you do for me? Coming home and taking care of you and the baby. No, you do not. I raise, I well, don't you want a house? Don't night. you want a house? Don't you want to be a family? Oh, and you're helping me by doing what? Oh, yeah, I mean, you work I mean, and what? So what? I seen y'all going to the hotel. I mean, what's up? I mean. I mean, what's going on? I mean, Did come on. Did you know that she's living with him? Yeah, he, uh, she said that he wasn't fulfilling her needs sexually. I mean, if it was me, I would, I'd be looking for somebody else, too. I mean, if you can't fulfill my sexual needs, you know, I'm probably going to go somewhere else and try to find me someone who will. So that's what she did, obviously. She'll be calling you? Yeah, she'll call me. Calling me, crying, telling me she needs this. She won't call you, man. She, she ain't gonna be calling you. She ain't gonna be calling you. Don't even she ain't gonna be calling you. She ain't gonna call you. Oh, I'm scared. Hey, you know the number. I'm scared. I mean, that's it. She ain't gonna be at the same club as you're gonna be at. It's not even gonna be God. like that. You know the number. You know what I'm saying? Just call me. I'm the man. You know what I'm saying? You know the number. Your night's over with, man. I probably go home. I probably get a call before I even get to the house. I think um they um he might get cheated on it again. I mean she was real secretive about things and she pulled the wool over my eyes, so for like five or six months, so I don't see why she couldn't do it to somebody else. Proving her health and says men will take a back. Robert makes a vigilant call to cheaters. Robert Grisham, age 27, a youth minister concerned by his girlfriend's change of habits. I remember just, um, last winter being in my apartment and uh, we had a fire going and we we're just uh, cuddled close together under a blanket and she was just telling me about how much she appreciated me being in her life and uh, how much she just um, how much she loved me and our future together one thing i have noticed is it, it, i kind of feel like there's no more love in her voice when she talks to me now I especially noticed that on the phone. Um, she just seems... May be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Misha Oaks, age 28. A choreographer dancing around the truth. 
Investigation Day 5. Cheaters detectives waste no time initiating the current investigation and assign field crews to the residence Robert shares with the suspect. After several days of routine activity, Cheaters PIs spot suspect Misha Oaks leaving her home one afternoon. Making several stops along the way, suspect Oaks arrives at an apartment complex, then quickly disappears into one of the units. The situation becomes immediately apparent as suspect Oaks emerges from the home wrapped in the affectionate embrace of an unknown gentleman. Traveling a few miles to a local eatery, suspect Oaks dons her companion's jacket as he leads her inside where the two share a meal and some kissing. Satisfied, the couple ventures to a nearby movie house. As they wait for the show to begin, the unknown gentleman educates suspect Oaks in the finer points of gaming. Hours later, suspect Oaks and loving companion commemorate their time together before departing back to the companion's residence. Calling it a day, suspect Oaks' male companion retrieves his coat before bidding his sweetheart farewell. Investigation Day 7. Hours after Robert has left for the day, Cheater's detectives perk up when suspect Oaks departs the apartment and heads straight to the same residence she visited two days earlier. Suspect Oaks parks her car. Her companion, who has now been identified as Topaz Williams, swaggers out to her SUV. Watching the two exchange friendly hellos from afar, Cheater's investigators tail suspect Oaks and companion Williams for several miles, determining the day's itinerary as the couple stops at a video rental store. Selecting a handful of movies, the cozy couple checks out, then heads over to a grocery store a few blocks away. Strolling the aisles, companion Williams assists suspect Oaks in picking out the necessary items for their afternoon alone. With their purchases in hand, companion Williams displays his familiarity with suspect Oaks as they enter her vehicle and return to his apartment. Suspect Oaks spends her few stolen hours remaining with companion Williams behind closed doors. Eventually, suspect Oaks is forced to leave for a dinner date with Robert. Investigation Day 10. All activities appear back to normal as suspect Oaks sees Robert off to work in the morning. But Cheater's surveillance teams are quickly reassured of suspect Oaks' intentions as she departs just 10 minutes later. She is soon back at Companion Williams' front door. He greets her and sweeps her off her feet. Suspect Oaks shows her contempt for Robert in this recorded phone conversation. Concluding the operation, Cheaters detectives prepare a summary for Robert. After the break, the confrontation. With Misha's infidelity well documented, Cheaters requests a meeting with Robert to disclose the outcome of the investigation. Unwavering in his pursuit for the truth, Robert prepares to review surveillance. Rob, thanks for being out here this afternoon. No problem. Thank you. I know that when you initially contacted us, you had some concerns about what was going on in your relationship. Our detectives have compiled some of the information that you've requested of us. Are you ready to take a look at some of that, Rob? Yes, definitely. On this day of the investigation, Rob, we had a detective that was outside Nisha's apartment. She was observed coming out of her apartment, gets into her truck, and drives to a residence. After entering, she is seen leaving shortly thereafter with the gentleman in tow. Oh. They're followed to a restaurant, and you can see him lean in and give her a kiss. Uh, I know that's... That's not, I know that's unexpected. After lunch with this gentleman, they go to a theater. I don't know from this information if they did actually go to a show, 
But while they're waiting for some time, they're playing some arcades, taking some photos. These are things you do with people that you're involved in a relationship with. After the outing of the day, she drops him off. He leans in, gives her a kiss, and then she goes home. On this day of the investigation, she sends you off to work, goes inside after she feels confident that you've left, comes right back out, gets into her truck, and again goes to the residence of this gentleman. And you could see how she's carrying on. You could see for yourself how they're carrying on. They stop by a park, and you can see an embrace. It's relatively intimate carrying on where they go back to the residence of this gentleman, and there's a, another kiss and embrace. Rob, that's not pleasant. I understand. Is this at least an answer to some of the questions that you've been struggling with in your mind? Yeah. I know what's going on now. We do know that as we stand here, Misha is again in the company of this gentleman. I'm going to call the detective right now and find out what their exact location is. Yeah, we just finished up the client briefing. Can you tell me what we have? They're in a restaurant right around the corner. Okay, we have detectives inside and out. They've been there for a little while. Okay, we're wrapping up right now. We're head over. All right. Are you ready to go? Let's do this. Okay, let's load up. This could be him now. Yeah. Go ahead and start moving. Okay. Okay, we're rolling. We're rolling right now. They left the restaurant? Okay. They're across the street. They're on the move. All right. She's got a tan track suit. You got a visual? Yep, I got you right now. Right there? Stop. Stop, there they are. Okay, Robert, come on this side, come out this side. Come. Misha, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you, can you stop for a second and give Robert a chance to ask you some questions? It's okay, hey, it's all right. Don't, don't start getting on crumb, dog. Don't start getting on crumb, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? That's what, what I'm trying to figure out. What are you doing? I want some answers. What about this? What's this right here, man? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, while, while I'm at work, while I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, providing, you off with this okay. dude right here? Oh, my God. I, I, I ain't know. I ain't know yet. I know okay. she had a boyfriend, but I ain't, I ain't know. Oh, you I, knew. I, I, never knew. I never knew who he was. All I knew was like this. Um, I was having a good time with him, and, uh, I don't know, man. I don't, he got kind of like got me scared right now because I don't know right. if he, he'll have a gun, a weapon, or none of that. You don't know okay. that. You can't even get this dude to take you out of his own car? He ain't got a car, do you? He ain't even got a car. He's driving there with my car, right? So what do you want? What do you want me to do now? What am I supposed to say now? I don't you know. know. Went through all this. Thinking, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I was thinking, you know. Get your stuff out by five. I'm not leaving you. You're not. I'm not leaving you. And you're not leaving me. Coming up, the conclusion. You know, get your stuff out by five. I'm not leaving you. You're not. I'm not leaving you. And you're not leaving me. You were having problems in your relationship. But you're also helping cause problems in someone else's relationship. That's true. Is, is that? That's true. I mean, I don't got no excuse. Right? Like, I don't have no excuse whatsoever. I don't have none to wear. Even if I could have an excuse that could give me a million dollars, win a million mm -hmm. dollars, I don't have one for that, though. I'm in the wrong, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. But both well, how, of us in the wrong. Well, how long were you going to let it continue, though? I don't know. I mean, I was having a good time with her, but. As long as you were sense, having a good time? In a sense, I mean, in a sense, 
it was at times where I felt that her mind was leaning towards him, you know, the way she reacted and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it maybe it wasn't gonna go a long time and stuff. I did see some traces that she really cared about this guy. We are gonna be together. I don't know about that. Yes, we are. I don't know about that. Yes, we are. So there's nothing we can do about it but move on, all right? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm about to do. If he, if he, if he would, could I say something to him? I think at least you own an apology. This is too much. Let's hear, let's hear what I got to say. Let's hear what I got to say. I don't want, I don't want to get into you enough. I don't, I don't care, dude. I, listen, I don't care. I'm just, I'll say one thing. I was in the wrong. I was. I admit I was in the wrong. But all along, man, you know, I had a feeling, man, that she still had feelings about you, man. I, and I sensed that for the way certain times she acted around me. And I ain't trying to do nothing, you know what I'm saying, to make you not hear that, though. But I'm sorry. I was in the wrong. I'm being a man, though. You know what I'm saying? Other people just want to hear it and say it. This would have burned off. So I'll let you know right now, I don't want you to see me. We have any type of girls any type of bitter feelings, man. I apologize. We don't accept it. I get enough about this, man. But I did apologize, man. I was man up for you that much. I said, I apologize. I was out of wrong. I think you need to have your stuff out of my apartment by five. I'm not leaving. Is there a reason that you chose to go in this direction, Misha? I mean, I just wanted to make sure that it was what I wanted. So I had to test myself. That make, that's what that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That doesn't make any sense. It does to me. None. It, was, it doesn't is. to me or anybody else. That's what that is, though. And, how, and that how were you, how was that going to give you an answer as far as this relationship was because concerned? Because the whole time I was with him, I couldn't stop thinking about him. Are you okay giving her a ride back because this other gentleman took off? All right. What was I doing that was making you unhappy? Or what wasn't I doing that was making you unhappy? Well, Rob, if she doesn't want to talk, you're not going to make her, especially in this environment. But you can still consider how you want to go forward. No one knows what the future holds. I think in the future, when you find someone who shares your commitment, and is the same way that you are. You'll know that. Undaunted by the turn of events, Robert focuses on both his work and his congregation. Later in the show, Cheaters discusses his present condition. But next, Cheaters welcomes Stacia Colvin. Stacia returns to describe the betrayal she suffered at the hands of her former lover. Stacia Colvin. Stacia discusses how discovering her lover's treachery allowed her to recognize the fragility of her emotions. There's no excuse for him doing what he did to me, especially with my best friend. So there's nothing that he really could have done. It would have helped if he would have been apologetic. It would have helped if he would have told me that it was nothing, but he told me he loved her. <laughs> I mean, both of y'all are, are up. You're up, dog, for real. <laughs> what the? F you what love her? Is that any way Tell to? Me. You love That's her? That's our two kids. I've never had another boyfriend but him. I never was in a serious relationship with anyone except for him. So for him to hurt me like that, it took, a, what, three and a half years? to really, really be able to trust another person before. And I really still don't, and I never probably will. Do you love this girl? Do you love her? <laughs> what about you? Your woman, you've been with her. Oh, so you, you love me because I have your them. kids? Why can't And you... why do you love her? Because she's such a, right, what? I'd say a couple months after I got over it and realized what I was going through, realized I was taking care of him and my two kids and realized that he wasn't anything. He couldn't do anything for me, that he couldn't support us. So I'm very relieved now because I know that I'm better off in the situation that I'm in now. And then I could still be taking care of him and my two kids and all that. And it was just, it's better off now, definitely.
Keisha and his willingness to make her a happy woman. For his family, Robert takes the difficult first step with the encouraging support of cheaters. Robert Black, age 26, a welder worried that his girlfriend is misleading him about the truth behind her actions. Well, the first time I met Shannon uh, was at a bar. She was dancing, and uh, I got to dance with her once, and I thought she was pretty, a real pretty girl, and uh, caught my eye the way she was just having a good time with everybody laughing and stuff. And uh, uh, amazingly enough, I, I ran into her a couple of days later uh, at a gas station, and uh, she gave me her number. She remembered me from the club, and uh, we started going out, talking on the phone, and uh, started going out more and more. And it, it just evolved into something that was a little serious, you know. Whenever uh, me and Shannon are together, it's, uh, it's wonderful. We cuddle up on the couch watching TV. Uh, she's real nice to me. She, she, you know, we both, it's like day and night. I and mean, whenever I, uh, she's apart from me, uh, it's like I can't get a touch with her on the phone. You know, she gives me the cold shoulder on the phone. Sometimes she won't even tell me she loves me. It's like she puts a barrier up whenever we're apart, but whenever we're together, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's totally different. I, I don't understand it at all. It's really weird. At first, the white lies uh, I could deal with, but they kept building on each other and became just totally uh, out of hand. I just couldn't deal with it anymore, I mean, uh, like when she first told me that she was pregnant. Uh, I questioned that until I went to the doctor. And uh, I'm very happy that she's pregnant and that hopefully this is something that could be the catalyst to help her change and, and, and help herself heal or make a better, better life for both of us and our family. I really want, I want to propose to her and I would like to marry this girl. Well, after we found out she was pregnant, uh, I thought she wanted to spend more time with me, but uh, it hasn't been that way. It's like I try to get in touch with her and I call her at home and she doesn't answer. And uh, I finally get in touch with her and she tells me that she was at home. And Shannon's the type of a girl that always had a man in her, in her life, you know? So if I'm not there, then uh, I'm betting that uh, Somebody else is there and I want to know. If she comes clean with me and tells me everything and for the sake of the family, of our family, I would, I'd work on it really hard. It'd be hard for me to do, but I would really, I'd try to forgive her because family's supposed to forgive each other. And uh, I would really want it to, the family to survive this. But I hope she's not cheating on me. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Shannon Boyle, age 24. A customer service rep bringing in another man for emotional support. Investigation Day 3. Cheaters operatives situate outside the suspect's workplace and maintain their position for many hours. Early in the afternoon, Cheaters PIs zoom in on suspect Shannon Boyle exiting her place of employment. Impatiently pacing back and forth, suspect Boyle appears to be waiting for someone. Cheaters agents prepare for mobile surveillance after an unknown gentleman abruptly pulls up. Suspect Boyle hops into the sports car and immediately plants a big kiss on the unidentified man. Cheaters investigators, aware of suspect Boyle's pregnancy and of her scheduled OBGYN appointment, pursue the couple to a local hospital. Accompanied by the unknown man, suspect Boyle enters the doctor's office and remains there for some time. Eventually, suspect Boyle and companion head back through the parking lot to his car. Attempting to follow the two, Cheaters PIs lose sight of the vehicle as it speeds dangerously off with Robert's unborn child inside. Investigation Day 5. Situated outside the residence suspect Boyle shares with her sister, Cheaters PIs wait for any questionable activity. They observe suspect Boyle on her balcony just minutes before the arrival of a familiar-looking vehicle. 
Suspect Boyle's companion, whose identity is withheld, makes his appearance and dashes to Suspect Boyle. Stopping to pick some flowers for his girl, the companion presents his gift to the enamored suspect. Suspect Boyle graciously hugs her companion, and the couple departs. Cheetah's detectives track the duo to a nearby tavern. With a clear vantage point from the parking lot, Cheetah's agents watch Suspect Boyle and companion ordering several rounds of drinks. Suspect Boyle motions for her boyfriend to hush up as she answers a call from Robert. She promptly disposes of him and makes a toast with her preferred lover. With a party winding down, the companion leads Suspect Boyle back to his car. Cheetah's investigators follow the couple back to Suspect Boyle's apartment where kisses are shared before the companion reluctantly departs. Investigation Day 9. Cheetah's operatives stationed at Suspect Boyle's residence receive notice of her companion's probable arrival. And as if on cue, Suspect Boyle emerges from her home just moments before her companion enters the scene to pick up his date for the evening. Suspect Boyle displays little consideration for Robert's feelings in this recorded phone call. Hello? Hey, baby. I was wondering if you want me to take off work tomorrow to go to the doctor's. Oh, I can't do that. Well, I feel like I should, I should be there. I already talked to my boss and stuff. I mean, he said it was cool. Oh, don't, don't worry about it. I have a friend of mine. She's taking me. She took off. You sure you don't want me to go along? I can come along. Don't worry about it. It's over this time. Yeah, that ain't right. I, I think I should be able to go. Well, I already told her. Are, are you, you don't want me to be there? Cheetah's crews prepare all the compiled data for a meeting with Robert. Coming up, the confrontation. With comprehensive evidence validating Robert's fears, Cheater speaks with him to reveal Shannon's wayward conduct. Ready to move forward, Robert prepares himself for the unexpected results. Bobby, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, I, know, I know you're kind of jittery and a little bit on edge. We're here tonight because our detectives do have some information that they wanted you to see. Are you ready, ready to take a look at it, Bob? I want to know. Okay. As the investigation started, the detective observed your girlfriend outside of where she works, mm -hmm. and she's picked up from another gentleman, and they share a kiss together. Miss. They were followed to a hospital, and you see them walking in holding hands. They were in there for some time. Yeah, he's going to the doctor instead of me. And that's your, your girlfriend and your child, and he was identified as Is that name? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one of her exes. So this is someone that she's been with, she's dated before, that you know about? Yeah, she's mentioned his name for. On this day, they drive to a local motel. They head into the motel, and they're in there for quite some time. Now, does this answer the questions that you came to us for? Yeah. We do know where she is, Bobby. Good. She's Let's go. she's right around the corner at a restaurant with this gentleman. I like to tell him how much uh, I think about the subject myself. Bobby, look at me. I know you're upset. This is the mother of your child but we're not gonna let it get out of hand, okay? No, I'm not gonna stoop to her level. Okay, good, that's what we wanna hear. It's Joey, what do you got? Okay, we have a, she's wearing a black shirt, he's wearing a white shirt. We're coming in right now. You see us? You stay next to me. Okay. I see you, all right, I got you. Stop right here, stop. Can you explain to them? 
That's right. Why is it? Why is it? Why is it that you're going to the doctor? What the hell you drinking for, man? Following me? What the hell you drinking for? You drinking? No, that's not necessary. What about the baby, man? Are you what about the baby? What are you following me for? It's not your baby. It's not your baby. It's not. Coming up, the conclusion. What the hell are you drinking for? Are you drinking? No, that's not necessary. What about the baby? Man? What about the baby? What are you following me for? It's not your baby. It's not your baby. It's not. I've been with for a while. It's not your baby. I was pregnant when I got with you. Well, you were pregnant when you got with him? Yes. So you've been pregnant I didn't know. for? I didn't know. It's me and him. When you started dating like, him, we've been trying to get back together. We've been trying to get back. What's together. trying to get back together? Okay, that's enough. Well, you're together or not Any together? Any more than anyone, man. Why? Why are you starting a relationship with him okay, if you're, you're together? With girl. Girl. No, all you. We just want to find out what some some of the truth is for our client. Funny man, you guys are funny. Y'all think this is funny? Listen, here, here's it's funny. You can just tell. What's your side of the story? The side of my story is we haven't been together for a while. Me and Bobby has been. Okay. You and this gentleman haven't been together for a while. They have been together, off and on. My baby mama. Off. Okay, so when was the off? In the off is when you got together with, with Bobby? Yeah. But when you got on, you just didn't let Bobby know that you were back well, with, yeah, we with him. We haven't been around. We haven't even spoke to each other. It's been, it's been months. I mean, we'd see each other, but he works so much. I mean, I, I don't have time to talk to him. I don't live with them. Well, you know why he's working? Because he's trying, he thinks this he is his child. He didn't even take me to the doctor's appointment. I had him take me to the doctor's appointment. He's it's been trying, baby. he's no, been he trying, hasn't. he's no, been he trying hasn't. to go to the doctor. You you a drink, You've dude? been excluded. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey. 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 Whoa, Bobby, Bobby. Come on, come on. Bye. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Come on. Hey, hey. Bobby, that's not necessary. Bobby, come on. Squash you up. It's not worth it, baby. It's not worth it. You know that. What, man? Go away, go, come on. Whatever, man. No, it's whatever. This isn't it. Man, you know what? What you want? You know, I'm pregnant. I'm not in a big. Look. Yeah, look, all we want. Is that my face, all we want to do is find out what's going on. Hey, this. No, I'll take a pass on that, brother. You've got a great start for family values going on here. Good start for family values. All right, let's get out of here. I want to think of denial, but maybe she's drunk. I don't know. I don't know if her being drunk, though, is an excuse for how she was disrespecting you. She was lying to your face. Yeah, of course she was. What is this going to do to you tomorrow when you wake up? There's a possibility it could be mine. So I have to stand up like a man and put my boots on in the morning and go to work and find out if that's my kid or not. Take her to court and get a DNA test on her. That's what I'm gonna do. So you're willing to fight for that Damn child? Damn right I am. Okay. She ain't worthy. What if the child were affected huh. because of her drinking? God help her. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to I had that on my shoulders or on my plate when I went to see the Lord. That's for that I'm sure. After the confrontation, Robert finds solace in his family and friends. At the end of the show, Cheaters update you on his status. But next, Cheaters welcomes Anita Cibriano she comes forward to remove the stigma associated with her role in the Castillo case. Anita describes her moment of panic when descended on by the cheater's crew. Anita Cibriano, age 25. 
Anita stops by to offer her recollection of the events surrounding the Veronica Castillo case. Actually, we just, I just moved into the area, so I wanted to check out the new spots right there, and that just happens, so happens to be very convenient by my house. I wasn't know I was going to be surprised with all that. Is that the way we're playing now? I'm usually the one who's the dominant to find out what's going on or anything. This time I didn't because I didn't care <laughs> too much. So no, I mean, this is the first time that a female has actually came and done something like this. What? You're a liar. Oh, come on, you're a liar. That's not necessary. Wait, 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 wait. You told wait, me you were at work, right? Wait, 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 wait. You know what? Oh my God. Oh my God. Get away from me. You lied to me. You told me you were at work. Oh, well, I was there with my baby. Oh. No, that's not working. That's what you call working? Uh -huh. Who else do you work with like that? That's how I work. That's it. We know that he's been seeing you more recently. Yes. He okay, has. so you got back together? Yes. Okay. Let me tell you. My children are going through a difficult situation right now because he's not there as often as he should be anymore. And with him leaving so abruptly that night, I'm doing this a lot by myself. I'm getting enveloped by me. So <laughs> he's. He's came around twice in the past three weeks, so it's kind of hard for my children to understand why it's going the other way now. I mean, he's trying to come and see us, but I'm not letting him. <laughs> he will eventually be back home. and insists on getting the matter cleared up. Tired of feeling like a doormat, Maribel asks cheaters to review the complexities of her relationship. Maribel Hasso, age 23, a homemaker worried that her husband may be on the hunt for another love interest. I've been married for 10 years. Um, then happy marriage, but I don't know what happened in this six months. It's different. He's different in different way, and I think in everything he changed. Um, no go with me to shopping. Um, he never have time. All time he's tired. You say I go with my friends and drink beers, but I don't think so. When I called his friend, he's at home, and he go another way, but I don't know where. Yeah, he came late at home, and he got phone numbers in his pocket. And he, when I ask, when I ask him, he say, I don't know, it's my friend. He, he's mean, mean. I think I, I'll be better with without him because he's no very true, truthful person, you know. And I don't want this life for my kids. I want a very good father for my kids. And the parking lot for a short while. Reality sets in just minutes later as the pretty young woman leans over to suspect Mendoza for a more than friendly kiss on the lips. She then gets into her vehicle to depart. As the young lady drives away, suspect Mendoza hustles back to work to avoid any trouble arising from his brief absence. Investigation Day 5. Maintaining a safe distance from the front door, Cheater's PIs continue surveillance inside suspect Mendoza's place of employment. Cheaters' operatives zoom in and watch the ladies' man laughing it up with several females as the restaurant prepares to close for the evening. 
After discussing plans for the remainder of the night, suspect Mendoza and his female admirer, whose identity is withheld, leave the premises and make their way to a nearby bar. A short time later, Cheater's investigators observe the two enjoying cocktails and conversation out by the patio. The female companion appears enamored by the talkative Mendoza and proves to be an attentive listener. Hours pass before the attractive couple return to the car. Suspect Mendoza begins to turn up the heat, but the young lady appears to rebuff his eager advancements. After several attempts, Suspect Mendoza receives a parting kiss from his loving companion before going home for the evening. Investigation Day 9. Cheaters sleuths are back at Suspect Mendoza's workplace after four days with nothing to report. The elusive young man is spotted leaving the restaurant when his shift concludes for the night. Suspect Mendoza appears to be in quite a hurry as investigators attempt to keep him in their sights. Many miles later, he arrives at a well-known restaurant. Cheaters agents follow Mendoza to the rear patio, where his female companion happens to be awaiting his arrival. Suspect Mendoza seems comfortable with neglecting his wife, as shown in this recorded telephone conversation with complainant Hasso. Well, Concerned about Maribel's ability to cope with the final results, Cheaters investigators wrap up the inquiry. After the break, the confrontation. Now that surveillance cameras have captured undeniable proof of adultery, Cheaters contacts Maribel to update her on the case. Anxious about the unknown results, Maribel readies herself to discover the truth. Maribel, thanks for being here tonight. I know you're quite nervous, and yes. this is something that's been on your mind and troubling you for quite some time. The reason that we had you come out tonight is because our detectives have gathered some of the information that you asked us to try and find. Are you ready to take a look at some of that? Yes. As the investigation starts, we had a detective outside the restaurant where your husband, Jesus, works. He was observed leaving the restaurant with a young lady. He walks her out to her car. It seems like they're gonna shake hands for her to walk away, but oddly enough, she leans in and gives him a little peck before she gets in her car and leaves, and he runs back into the restaurant. On this day, Maribel, after getting off work, he goes to a bar. Shortly thereafter, he's met again by the same young lady. They sit outside on the patio, and now from their body language, you can see she fixes his hair, he's playing with her hair. As they leave, he walks around to her car, they do a little dance number out in the parking lot. I think this would suggest that his intentions are not right, especially for someone who's married and has two children at home. Yes. On the nights when Jesus works, where does he think you typically are? In my home. What, with the children, correct? Yes, with okay. my children. We know that Jesus again got off work tonight a little bit earlier. You just came from home, so you know he's not at home. We know where he is, and he's again with this young lady. Okay. I know this is difficult. Yes. Do you want to go have a conversation with Jesus? Yes. Okay. Why don't we hang on right here and let me call the detective. What are we looking at? They left the restaurant 
and they're sitting out by their cars. They're out by the car drinking beer. So he's just, okay. Okay, we'll load up, pull around and lead us to him. Okay, come with me. I'm gonna call Gomez right now. They're outside next to the car drinking beer. They're right outside. You don't worry about, it. you just make him respond to you. Make him ask you, make him answer. Okay, don't let him run away. What kind of car is he driving? It's a Focus. A blue Focus? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, on the right or left? Right hand side? Right by the building? All right, right there. All right, stop. Okay, come on my side. Cameras up on the right hand side. On my side. Hey, Seuss. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. And we have someone who'd like to ask you some questions. Oye, ¿no crees que era fácil que me dijeras lo que estaba pasando? ¿Fácil de qué? ¿No Mari, ¿por qué le hiciste de pedo? ¿Por qué le hiciste tú así? ¿Por qué haces esto? Escúchame. No van a deportar. No me importa. ¿Quién es ella? Dime quién es, es ella. Es una amiga. Es no es una amiga. ¿Ya? ¿Yeah? ¿Eres su amiga? ¿Eres su amiga? Ya te es vi. mi amiga. Jesús, me acaban de enseñar el video. ¿La estabas besando? No. ¿Es, ¿Quién es ella? ¿Quién es? ¿Quién es ella? This is his wife. This is my friend. Do you kiss all your friends? Yeah. Why? Coming up, the conclusion. This is his wife. This is my friend. Do you kiss all your friends? Yeah. Why? Because your wife's at home waiting uh -huh. for you to come home from work. Te lo dije. With your two children. Oh, ah, sí. Ten, ten mi dinero y llévatelo. What did he tell you? No tenías niños. No le dijiste well, oh, que tenías okay. niños. Oh, eh, 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 that's not necessary. Come on now. Come on now. Okay, yo te lo dije. No me dijiste nada. ¿Qué te estoy diciendo? ¿Qué te dije? No me dijiste nada. Okay, está bien. Can I get out, please? Well, ¿Sí actually, you'll help us with some information if you could, ma'am. ¿Lo conociste en el restaurante? Your wife yeah, was concerned. No, Do you love Can your I wife? Hey, Seuss, come on. Don't hey, run Seuss. away like this. Hey, Seuss, there's no place for you to go. Hey, Seuss. Jesus, abre la Speak puerta. with her. Yo no estoy diciendo nada malo. ¿Quieres que te enseñe el video? De lo que te están siguiendo. Te están Pero siguiendo. Pero te estoy diciendo, I don't care. ¿Ah, sí? Sí, a huevo él. ¿Por qué él? Y vas a ver que lo you died, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't understand, understand what you're doing. But I don't believe I'm it's the truth. Huh? ¿Qué vas a hacer, Jesús, por favor? ¿Qué I'm vas a hacer? ¿Qué I'm vas a hacer? Work. I don't care. Look. Hey. Guys, let, let him out. Tú eres el que querías eso. Tú eres el que querías eso, ¿no? Hey, sweetie, watch out, watch out. Let me get away. Watch out. Here, come here. No, no, no. Hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Here. Can you talk to us for a second? What did he tell you? He said he wasn't married. I know he wasn't married. I mean, obviously, because he asked me out, so... So he didn't ask you out as just a friend? No. Con respeto. No sabía. Con mucho respeto, no sabía. No, está bien. Ya. Yeah. Are you ready? All right. Thank you very much. The car's over there. Do you have someone that you need to call? No. Yeah. Adela, por favor, si va Jesús a la casa, no le abres la puerta, ¿ok? No, al rato te explico, ¿ok? No, Adela, no le abres la puerta nada más, por favor, ¿sí? Pues ya por eso no le abras la puerta, llama a la policía, como quiera, cualquier cosa. ¿Ok? Pues sí, estaba con otra mujer, Adela. 
Sí. Aquí por un restaurante. Ah, ya, ahorita te digo, ¿ok? Bye. Bye. This time. I want to see my children. I'm scared. It's a little bit aggressive. Mm. Are you going to stay at your sister's tonight? I don't think he go to my home. I don't think he will. But I don't know. I think you've got the answers that you wanted as far as what was going on yeah. with Jesus. I got now, all of my answers. Would you like to try and resolve your differences? No. It's not that important to you? It's, it's important to me, but I think for him, no. After the confrontation, Maribel believes she has a lot to think about before making a final decision about her philandering husband. Coming up shortly, Cheaters uncovers her final thoughts on the future of her family. But first, Cheaters welcomes Fred Epstein. Fred returns to update Cheaters on how his life was affected by the betrayal of his former lover. Fred Epstein, age 43. Finally ready to discuss the matter, Fred returns to speak about the night of the confrontation. Well, as you know, I'd just seen the film, and there we were in the van pulling up. I knew she was in there. I knew Joey wouldn't take me to a scene where it might be accidentally not her. And it's like being on a roller coaster. You go, you click, click, click to the top, and you know it's fixing to fall. You know, here you go. You know your heart's fixing to break. So I was really on emotional overload. I was almost adrenaline so high that you go numb for a second, but I felt it. My heart broke. I knew it. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Oh. What are you doing? Oh my God, oh my God. I'm Get the camera over here. You did it. Go, 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 go. What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Oh, God, no! How do you explain this? I can't. Well, you know, I didn't really know much about the guy, but I figure someone like him that would throw eggs and that would be that immature and do something that callous, it doesn't speak well for him, and I think that maybe she might have seen that, too, that it was sort of immature and dumb, and uh, I think he was just uh, playing it for what it was worth that night. They, they the signify... Sort of physical, emotional signify how important you are to me. I mean, how many okay, other women listen do I this provide that? Get out! Get out! What's he doing? I don't know. What's happening? Get down. What do you stay down? What was that? Oh, uh, somebody's funny. I feel like this last experience and, of course, the way it ended and, of course, the help of cheaters, I think it, instead of bringing me down and making me negative, I really think it helped. I really think it reminded me that hope does spring eternal and that just because you don't get it right the first time, you can try it again. I've always had a, a saying I've lived by, if at first you don't succeed, redefine the parameters of success and move on. Maribel Hasso is willing to give her husband a second chance if he agrees to several non-negotiable stipulations. She says that he is to quit drinking alcohol immediately and insists that he will never see his children again if he is ever unfaithful. Under these guidelines, Ms. Hasso has agreed to allow her husband back in the house and has decided tough love is the only answer to her family's problems. Jesus Mendoza realizes that getting caught with another woman is nothing more than an abrupt wake-up call. He says there is nothing more terrifying than the thought of losing his family. He happily welcomes all of Maribel's strict terms. Mr. Mendoza is quite sure that he'll straighten out his act and is no longer worried about the temptations of young, attractive females. Cheaters producers made several attempts to contact the female companion behind his girlfriend's secrecy. Dave entrusts the detectives at Cheaters to look into the matter. Dave Hauser, age 29, 
A printing company manager worried that his girlfriend seeks attention outside of their relationship. Uh, my idea of love is, is having that, that trust, that honesty in a relationship, um, having that companionship and, and intimacy. Um, you know, where, where you just work all day and the, the only thing you can really think about is, um, is the girl you're with. And I, I really thought, or I really feel that I, I've reached that point with, with Amanda. Um, it kind of just kind of hit me out of the blue one day, but you know, it's like you, you wake up and all you can think about or care about is, is the person you're with. Actually, I, I'm extremely committed to her and um, I would like to think that she's, she's pretty, pretty much committed to me. However, there, there's been some things in our relationship that have uh, kind of led me to believe otherwise. I've had several suspicions, um, including a while back, she, she lied to me. And uh, upon lying to me, I, I actually confronted her on it. I was extremely confident uh, that she was lying. Um, but even to this day, she, she still denies it. And I, that just really doesn't sit too well with me. Uh, to me, the main source of tension happens to be the fact that I, I have a tendency to work quite a bit. Um, and lately, when I've been coming home, uh, she's usually there, which kind of leads me to believe that she's not actually at work. Um, so that, that kind of kind of puts a little bit of tension in our relationship. This is something that, that, that I've got to know. I mean, I've, I, I've made a lot of concessions for, for, for this girl. You know, I, I, I let her move into my apartment. I, I you know, I, I take care of a dog that I, I don't really, I don't like, I can't stand it. Uh, but I, I mean, I, at this point I just, I just gotta know the truth. I, I gotta know. <laughs> if you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Amanda Ramsey, age 23. A tanning salon clerk who is dodging the intimate needs of her boyfriend while catching the eye of another man. Investigation day three. Cheaters investigators continue their research at headquarters while field crews focus all attention on the residence that Dave shares with his girlfriend. As an unidentified vehicle pulls up to the front entrance, suspect Amanda Ramsey emerges from the couple's domicile with her dog in tow. She enters the automobile and the unknown driver takes off down the street to a nearby shopping mall. Accompanied by an unidentified gentleman, suspect Ramsey takes her pooch for a walk through the parking lot. The male companion displays his proficiency on a skateboard, while suspect Ramsey takes a few photos to remember the impressive performance. A short while later, the couple adjourns to a nearby restaurant, where suspect Ramsey's companion treats her to a tasty Chicago-style hot dog. After the meal, suspect Ramsey informs her companion that it's time to get back to her place. Upon arrival, the unknown man grabs a large duffel bag from his vehicle and leads the suspect into the home she shares with complainant Hauser. All is silent for some time. After a lovely day spent with suspect Ramsey, the companion finally departs the building. Investigation day four. Cheaters agents anticipate further activity at suspect Ramsey's residence. They decide to lie low for any sign of movement. After hours of inactivity, inspectors note a familiar looking vehicle approaching from out of nowhere. The sedan stops near the front entrance and out pops suspect Ramsey's companion, now identified as Steve Kelvins. He heads inside only to return a short time later with his loyal girlfriend by his side. The two get into his vehicle and proceed to a nearby coffee joint. Suspect Ramsey and her escort disappear inside for a short time until the duo is spotted walking out, foaming lattes in hand. They find a comfortable little nook on the patio and bask in the midday sun. Later, Cheaters investigators follow companion Kelvins and Ms. Ramsey back to her apartment. Suspect Ramsey is comfortable with the belief that complainant Hauser will work late as usual. But what suspect Ramsey doesn't know is that her boyfriend has installed two hidden cameras in the apartment to help detectives gain an upper hand in the case. Companion Kelvin seems pleased as suspect Ramsey hops into his lap for a little horseplay. 
But what happens next is no game. Kelvitz yanks her trousers off, and the two engage in some explicit activities. The second camera then captures suspect Ramsey posing for a few pictures taken by her new lover. Cheaters detectives call it a day after companion Kelvitz leaves the complex. Investigation Day 7. Cheaters agents pick up the trail of suspect Ramsey just as companion Kelvitz drops by her place. She hops into his car, and cheaters pursue the two for several miles to a local grocery store. Suspect Ramsey strolls the aisles with companion Kelvin's, perhaps in search of the perfect ingredients for a romantic evening. After making their selections, the two lovers proceed back to companion Kelvin's vehicle, where the suspect demonstrates her desire to get behind the wheel. Suspect Ramsey demonstrates how to perjure the truth in this recorded phone call with her boyfriend. Cheaters investigators have sufficient evidence to close the case and notify complainant Hauser of the results. Coming up, the confrontation. With infidelity clearly established, Cheaters approaches Dave with the deleterious evidence. Ready to put an end to his suspicions, Dave steps forward to make a move in the right direction. Dave, thanks for being here tonight. I know you've been waiting a long time to get a response to your inquiry. Dave, our detectives have compiled some information that I think may provide you with some of the answers to your questions. Okay. Are you ready to take a look at that? Yeah, I'd like to do that. As the investigation starts, a detective was placed outside of your home. A car is observed driving up. As they parked, Amanda comes down and gets in the car. They were followed to an area of shops. After a while, a gentleman is out, evidently showing off his proficiency with a skateboard. But as they walk away together, they were observed walking hand in hand. From that point, they get back into the car, head back to your place. This gentleman was observed taking a, a duffel bag or some type of knapsack. As they enter, they're again walking arm in arm after spending quite some time inside. And as you can see, when he leaves, he is in a change of clothes. On this day, he picks her up and they proceed to a coffee shop. As they're spending some time out on the patio, you can see that their body language and, and their behavior you know, is more intimate than what we've seen before. From that point, Dave, they're again followed back to your home. After the first incident where we did observe them going inside, that's what led us to have you place the, the surveillance equipment inside. And luckily we did because we have an indication of what's really been going on when you're at work. Oh my God. Words just don't describe yeah. that kind of behavior. And I'm sorry that, that you had to see that. I'm sorry that you had to be exposed to this in this manner. Dave, the reason that we had you come here tonight, and she's again with this gentleman, would you like to find out what she's up to? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that would be good. Let me check with the detective right now. Yes, yeah, Joey. We just finished up the second interview. What are we looking at? They're at a park, just kind of hanging out at the park, walking around, spending some time sitting on the benches and stuff. Okay. All right. We're headed. We're headed in your direction right now. Let's go. They're about maybe a quarter of a mile straight ahead. The street kind of goes right into the park. We've got operatives that are on site. Okay, they're still in the car. Yeah. 
What you got? All right, guys, let's go. All right, we're staying on. On the right-hand side. We're looking on the right-hand side. That's them? OK. All right. Block the back end of this car. Block the back end. OK, someone's getting out. OK. Come out on the side there. Who's that? That's him. Amanda? Let her get her. Get your clothes on. Get your clothes on. What are you doing? What? We're what the hell talking. are you She's just talking with your pants down? Yeah, we we're just talking. How the hell does that happen? Coming up, the conclusion. We're just talking. How the hell does that happen? He's just a friend. I just met him. We're just talking. OK, you've got all your clothes off practically in the back of a cheap car, and you're just talking? Where did he go? What are we talking about? We're just talking. We're just friends. I'll just deal friends? with you later. Yeah. Help him. Help him. He has never been to your house? No, he's never been in my house. He's never been to your house? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you in there, man? In there? Amanda, look, you know, I, He's just a friend. That's all he is. I mean... And you, you don't sleep with him at all? You never had sex with him? No. Why don't you come out, man? Come on, dude, come out. Oh, great. No, stop. No, no, no. What are you doing? You don't even know me, man. Yeah, it's out of control, man. Leave him alone. Is this over for you? I guess so. What he said. Well, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want out of this? I don't know what I want. Get off of him! Get off of him! Stop! Get off of him! Get off of him! Get on him, anyway. Was this a set up or what? Where are my keys? I'm out of here, man. He's doing that. He's doing it. They're somewhere over there, man. Good luck. Go ahead. Hey. Orlandis, stay with me. Stay in between him and me. I don't want any of that on me. Talk to us for a second, all right? Just give us your side, because we, we want to know. They were in a relationship for two years. Did you know about that? No, I knew she was maybe with some dude, but, you know, she says she was saving up to move out. I don't know. Mm hmm I mean, you would have done the same thing, right? Well, I don't know about that. Now, what are your intentions with her? I don't have any intentions with her anymore. Forget about that. That's for sure. I mean, you know, all I can really say is I just want you to know that I really did love you. And I do love you. Um, I cared about you greatly, and I, you know, I, I just perhaps went about things the wrong way and um, didn't really show my affection the way I guess I could have. And, you know, I guess when, when you really look at it, maybe I, you know, I probably could have spent a lot more time with you. I mean, you're saying, you know, well, you do them... love me, you do care about me, but this is something we got to try to work on. So you're trying to say, well, you want to stay with me and work this out? Or... Well, I don't necessarily want to make any any type of decision at the moment. You know, but, you know, within the next few weeks or whatever, I think if we, you know, maybe spend some time apart, maybe kind of, you know, ease back into things, just kind of see what happens. With the confrontation behind him, Dave foregoes any judgment while rationalizing all angles. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters discloses what he ultimately decides to do. But now, Cheaters presents Daisy Durante. Daisy relives the torturous incident she endured on Cheaters. 
Daisy Durante, age 26. Daisy discusses the root of her uncivil behavior during the confrontation with her former lover. Um, when we first arrived at the bar, um, I knew that we were going to go catch Chris and that girl. And when I walked in and I saw them, I was so upset and I didn't want to cause a scene, but I wanted to let him know that I was very upset and I wanted him to choose, you know, right then and there if he wanted me or her. My feelings during the encounter that we had were mostly anger, but a lot of it was also pain. I was very upset and I was yelling and screaming and cussing and I was so, I was so hurt inside because I couldn't believe that he would do that to me. I like to thank cheaters for helping me. They made a great difference in my life because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have who I have now and I wouldn't be as happy as I am now. And I encourage anyone who has any doubts about the relationship to call cheaters. Dave Hauser is surprisingly calm when discussing the details of his case. He mentions that Amanda was somewhat justified in her actions due to his lack of attention to her many necessities. Despite the severity of the circumstances, Dave wants to give the relationship another try. Dave explains to Cheater's producers that he could never live with himself without giving Amanda a second chance. Amanda Ramsey is reluctant to admit any fault, saying that Dave needs to own up to being an inattentive boyfriend. At the risk of offending men in general, Ms. Ramsey suggests that infidelity is the ultimate tool to regain control of a neglectful spouse. She declares that all women should cheat on their significant others if specific needs are not being met. Cheaters producers, on the other hand, wholeheartedly disagree with her misguided theory and suggest that couples in despair seek immediate counseling. For his part, Steve Kelvins denies that his relationship with Ms. Ramsey was anything more than just a fling. Steve admits that he satisfies her in ways most men can't and says that it herself of all doubts, Jandy looks to cheaters for assistance. Jandy Thompson, age 24. Jandy fears that the elusive behavior of her boyfriend may indicate the presence of another woman. I did something kind of crazy. We, we had been at the mall and uh, we'd been ice skating, which I think is just a really cute little couple thing to do. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd fallen down and made some joke and an idiot of myself. And he said, I just love you, like he normally would as a friendship thing. And I just kind of looked at him and then we both kind of looked at each other like, is that you know, this is different than when you've said it before. That was the great thing about uh, Malfi was that because he was so comfortable with his emotions and they flowed easily, I felt very secure. Um, he's just kind of backed off quite a bit and just, we've kind of become more, almost like we're buddies than, uh, than boyfriend and girlfriend. And so I'm, I'm thinking that he's pursuing romance outside our relationship. I have reason to believe because he has less affection and he had pressured me for so long, quite a bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden that's just dropped off completely like he has no interest. I've invested a lot of time, a lot of energy in this relationship and I think he knows that. And for him to dismiss that and uh, maybe not give that thought, someone toying with my emotions, it does not go over well with me and I have to know. And that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm here is because I need to know, I want to be well educated on who I'm with and right. where our future lies and um, if he's not going to be, if he's not willing to be, you know, honest with me and straightforward, then I need to find out and it's my right to know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed.
Alfredo D. Gonzalez, age 28. Suspected of using work and friends as an excuse to avoid complainant and spend time with another woman. Investigation day one. Although the suspect, Alfredo Gonzalez, claims to be spending his loose hours catching up on work, it doesn't take cheaters long to discover that he spends his free time somewhere else. The evidence begins to mount. Shortly after their lunchtime rendezvous, Gonzalez and his companion retire to a local park to satisfy their remaining appetite. Apparently, the suspect is able to work a relaxing two-hour lunch with his female companion into his busy work schedule. Investigation day two. As things began to heat up, Gonzalez becomes more brazen in his behavior inviting companion Bowles over to his house for a quick lunchtime snack, all the while leading Jandy on as to his true whereabouts. What are you doing? Well, uh, I'm kind of getting bogged down here. We've got kind of an unexpected meeting uh, that's going to run late. Okay, and you can it late? I'm, I'm not going to be able to make dinner tonight. I'm kidding me. No, they're, they're really, we've really got a lot of stuff going on and that meeting's going to run late and then I'm going to have to do the stuff I was supposed to do this afternoon later tonight. An hour after arriving at Gonzalez's home, companion Bowles finally leaves the premises, but not before the suspect walks her to her car and gives her a long kiss goodbye. Gonzalez proves to be an easy target and the cameras roll on for a few more days, ultimately apprehending the suspect in his most compromising lie of all. There is little doubt as to what takes place inside. It's another closed case for cheaters. After the break, the confrontation. Now that Alfredo's honorable front has been compromised, Cheaters rushes to spare Jandy of any further indignities. With her heart in tatters, Jandy keeps her focus on the details of the evidence. We've got some evidence for you. He has been seeing someone else. I'm afraid it's a couple different people. As, as he's been calling you and over the last few Sundays, and telling you about uh, that he goes out with his friends, he goes to the red jacket, as you mentioned, and didn't want you to come anymore. Well, there was a reason, and that's because we've we found him with this other woman. We do have the surveillance footage, so you can see for yourself what uh, what we found. You okay? All right, here he is with this other girl. Do you recognize this girl at all? Yeah. I'm sorry, this, this is the, the, one of the worst parts. It gets a, a little more graphic. I hate to keep having to show you this, this part. Here was when we followed her to uh, his house. So going to the house, and obviously something happens because when he does come out, he's in different clothes. I'm sorry. I just feel like he's completely toyed with my emotions. And just whether he'd been upfront about it. We were just so close, I don't know what it was that he couldn't have just talked to me about. Do you feel that you, uh, you knew this outcome before I even said it? Just whether he'd been upfront about it. I just don't know why he couldn't have just told me. Yeah. I think he loves me. I think he enjoys being with me, but I think 
the fact that I can't give him what he wants. And that's sex. This makes me so angry. Right now, he is en route. Our detectives are with him. We, we believe he is with her. And I think this would be important for you to talk to him and ask him why. Get off. This is it. You all right? All right, here we go. She's got a red top on. We're not driving, we're walking. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Yeah, yeah. Right hand side of the right hand side. Come right around here. Oh, here he is. Okay, here he is. Here he is. Hey. Hey. I just had to work early in the morning. Kind of do. Hi. Who are you? I'm Stacy. Who are you? I'm Jandy. I'm Alfie's girlfriend. What? They've been dating for uh, quite some time now. and Two years. Were you not aware that he had a girlfriend now? Uh, no, you told me that you left. Out playing yourself? You know what, you, what you've been putting her through? We have... No, what is this? I mean, matter, what is this? What is this? Well, you can have him. I don't care. Good luck to you. I mean, there's nothing here anymore. So you hired all these people to come out here, and you don't give. I can't believe. No, no, no. Problem, and he had been calling her, telling her he loves her, and uh, here he is running around with you. Coming up, the conclusion. Playing yourself? Do you know what, you, what you've been putting her through? We have. Put in. No, what is this? I mean, matter. What is this? What is this? Well, you can have him. I don't care. Good luck to you. I mean, there's nothing here anymore. Uh, so you hired all these people to come out here and you don't give I can't believe no, no, no. problem and he had been calling her telling her he loves her and uh, here he is running around with you what do you think about so you that? have issue with me and the whole time he's had a girlfriend lying yeah, here twice and, and you got all issue these with people me. with cameras in my face for this and you've had issue with me yeah and you he's called them. You. did you or did you not call them okay Whatever. Did you or did you not call them? Whatever. My issue with him is separate with what you. What would you do if he's telling you that he, he cares? I wouldn't call people with cameras and lights in my face. When in fact, he was seeing you the same day. You're telling her how much you feel about her and then you're out with her. I cannot believe that you call people with I don't right. know, real. I just saw everybody with a lot of class. A lot of class. I I can't. Where are you going? Let's get the She's got a lot of class. Lots. Yeah, that was a little ridiculous. Oh, her. She's the one that hired y'all to come out here and do. I'm not. Jandy. This is ridiculous. Man. Why don't you go cover him? He's the one that called y'all out here. Car, car, car. Car, car. Wow, I just wish it had been with somebody with a little more class. 
Just get some room. Give him some room. Okay, we're trying. You know, y'all. Wow, you can definitely tell by the way she was dressed what she was useful for. What that was about, huh? Yeah. You hear me? Give him some room. They want to leave, let them leave. I'd much rather be dumped because I'm a classy broad with morals than some floozy ish. Okay, keep him rolling. Hey, follow him. And how am I wrong for having y'all involved? I mean. No, you're not. He, uh, he really didn't have much to say. Really couldn't well, say Well, she was much. really saying a lot. That was pretty ridiculous. Just glad it's over. She can have me. Yeah. And he's obviously had her. Well, she, uh, she was not the classiest hen in the hen house, I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh. I'm just, I think I'm just going to go home. Mm. I've got a friend waiting on me, and uh, it's kind of worried through all this. Let's get you back to your car. And if you do want to talk to somebody, I'm making right, them yeah, available I don't to, talk to you. Me. I just want to kick her. Yeah. <laughs> and that's unlike me, but damn, it pissed me off. She had balls. I mean, was she a classy broad or what? She was not a classy broad. <laughs> And that, that is the difference, and that's the most important thing, is that you way outclassed her and handled that so well. I'm very proud of you for that, too. I just, I wish he'd have said, I wish he'd, I think he'll realize. I just can't understand why Was she even a blonde? <laughs> With the confrontation behind her, Jandy considers the ramifications of abandoning her long-term relationship. Coming up, Cheaters discloses Jandy's ultimate decision. But next, Cheaters presents Chris Lewins. Chris experienced a rude awakening upon the discovery of his lover's secret activities. Chris Lewins, age 28. Chris returns to reminisce about the events that ensued on the night he confronted his boyfriend, Ivan. Well, when I first found out, I was uh, betrayed, lied to. Uh, I was kind of scared. I didn't, didn't really know what to think. Um, on the way there, I was trying to figure out who Lisa was. Um, I, of course, wanted to, uh, I wanted answers to the questions that I had going through my mind, because I always kind of had suspicions that he was doing something, but I didn't know what. What are you doing with him? That's, that don't look like Lisa. You don't look like Lisa. You need to get out of here. You need to get out of here, guys. Hey, hey, come on. As far as Ivan, I didn't really know what to say to Ivan, other than, you know, why did you, why did you lie to me like that? Uh, I, I don't think I deserve that. It's something that you shouldn't really do to anybody. You brought this, you brought this guy into my house, I just to our out. house. Did you put him in our bed? I should care too. No. And this is what, this is the things I get. And you want me out? I want you out tonight. You can go live with Lisa. Yes, I've, I still love Ivan, I always will. Uh, he's always gonna have a place in my heart. But I've learned through past relationships that just because you love somebody doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stay with that person. Uh, once they hurt you, I mean, there's a spot in your heart that is ripped out that just cannot be replaced no matter what you do, but you always will love that person. You need to take him wherever you live and let him, let him live, move with you because he's not staying at my house anymore. Okay, that's fine. You need to go get and y'all go do your own merry little right. thing. Let's go. Okay. Uh, she let her 
now. Thank you. Stop telling you two. Y'all yeah. better move the car. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Thank you. Uh, well, since the last time I was on Cheaters, of course, my attitude has changed a lot. Um, I do still see other people, uh, but I always keep in the back of my mind what Ivan did. Um, hopefully one day I'll find the right person that will treat me the way that I should be treated. Uh, but until then, I'm just going to keep looking. Jandy Thompson has decided to separate all ties with Alfredo Gonzalez and has not seen him since the night of the confrontation. Although Gonzalez did call to apologize, Jandy has moved on to being single again. After initially being upset with the media presence at the confrontation, Companion Bowles now understands the complainant's position and also no mortal affair. Tired of her doormat status, Shannon strikes back with cheaters on her side. Shannon Oliver, age 33, a housewife who suspects her husband spends time with another woman. You've been married how long? Five years. Five years. And you have a child? Yes. How old is this? Six child? months. He drinks a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, he's been drinking a lot lately. And um, when I start, I just got mad at him last night because he came on late. Mm -hmm. And. Um, he just went after me. I'm scared that to, who to tell, you know, than staying inside, you know, after he hit me, because I don't want, you know, someone to come take my child. Right. They'll well, think there's abuse in the house. Are y'all intimate anymore? Not much. Really? <laughs> no. He says he's tired because he's gone all the time. Anything suspicious besides just his total attitude? It's my friend, um, Shelly, right. that's working for him right now, answering the phones and everything. I tried to talk to her about it, and um, she, she acted strange about it. That's kind of where, where I got concerned, too, on her, because mm -hmm. like when I told him outside, I, I want to be in the office with him, and I can bring the baby and answer the phones. Sure. And, um, oh, no, he said he wanted me at home. If he is seeing somebody else, I, I do want to leave. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Michael Oliver, age 34. A car detailer who is suspected of spending time and money on another woman while his wife waits at home alone. Investigation day one. Cheaters check Shannon into a motel to provide a reprieve from her husband's abusive behavior. Shortly after, Oliver contacts his wife and tries to convince her to let him come over and speak with her. With the aid of a hidden microphone, Cheaters listens in. Tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll take a, I'll, I'll take a week off and we'll just, you know, just family, 
you know, just for us to get on the family. I'll take a week off. Just come back home. And I won't, I won't, I won't put my hands, I won't put my hands on you again. After much deliberation, Shannon finally decides to give Oliver a second chance, but he quickly breaks his new resolution. Investigation Day 5. Only three days after Oliver's reinstatement with Shannon, cheaters snoops track him to the apartment of an unknown woman. It doesn't take long to realize that Shannon Oliver still has good reason to feel suspicious, as evidence of a prior conversation recorded in Shannon's hotel room. Yeah, you never let them sleep with me, you never, you know, have confidence, and I thought maybe there's someone else, and if I need to know. Someone else, business, run around, do this and that, check their employees, and I'm trying to make sure all the bills are paid, and you know, kids are taken care of. I'll get somebody to help me with this business. That way, Obviously, Mr. Oliver leads a double life. Further investigation by Cheaters Cruise points to the fact that the woman who Mr. Oliver visits is actually an escort who advertises her services over the internet. The woman claims to be a professional massage therapist, but clearly the services the suspect receives are more intimate. After the break, the confrontation. With Michael's unmitigated gall unmatched, Cheaters tracks down Shannon to put an end to the deception. Shannon contends with her fragile emotions while studying the evidence. Uh, it's clear in the information that we were able to gather is that uh, he's seeing an escort service, an in-house escort service. He goes over, this woman does, uh, she advertises massages. Mm -hmm. We have surveillance footage that I believe goes a little bit beyond that massage level. So it's uh, different people, just not one person. He's been seeing the same girl. He goes to visit her. He doesn't go to a building. He mm -hmm. goes to her house. And um, we've followed him here on three or four different occasions. You can barely see him. He's walking up the stairs he is here she is on the balcony right here smoking a cigarette he said something on the table probably I don't know money or something but this is the place and there yes, she is that's the girl. I so he, uh, he has been lying yeah and this this information comes to us after, since you've left the hotel and have gotten back together with him. Oh, lies. And this, it's a little graphic, I'm sorry, to have to show you this. Uh, this was outside her bedroom that same night. Are you getting the message? Mm hmm loud and clear yeah but I didn't really I, after we talked I didn't think this was going on no this is going on I know so that he sees that one particular person this one person every time have you ever seen this this girl right now he is at her house he is there now would you like to confront him yeah here we go <laughs> That's him out there. Huh? That's yeah. him. That's him. Who, is it her? Yeah, that's her. Hey! Excuse what me. Are you, Go ahead. What are you doing? Could we talk to you? Who are you? Who's that? Mike, who's that? 
You, you just walked out with her. What are you doing? What Who is that? What are you doing, baby? Who is that? Hey, man, wait a minute. Hold up. Get Who, who's that face. girl? Wait a minute, baby. Hold, hold up. What are you doing? What? Who, who's that girl you're with? Who are all these people? Where's my damn car? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. You hey, sit there and you lied to me about all we're, that. We're from the TV show Cheaters, and uh, you've been telling your wife that you were, uh, for first thing, all you've been hitting your wife. Above that, just just yesterday, you said how you loved her and you weren't seeing any. You've been me following you leave me alone. for the last you week. You've been having these people follow me. Look. Get, yeah, get out yeah, of my face, yeah. Get out of my face. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Come on, man. Can what you explain man? to yourself why you've been lying to your wife? Man, you ain't got nothing to do with this. Get, get no, so I do. Man, help me see what you're doing. You're lying. Okay. Mike, you want to face your wife? Hey. Where are you going? Oh, no. Coming up, the conclusion. He's just gonna run and hide. Can somebody radio and find out where he's where John is? I know he's saying he's looking for the car. He's gone, he's going around, go around. Will they find me? Let's talk to him. He, he's taken off, <laughs> and uh, apparently he doesn't want to face up to his responsibilities. Mm -hmm. He'll want to talk to me later. He will? Yeah, he'll, he don't want to talk now. He won't, he'll want to talk just to me by myself. Um, he just took off like a light again. Come on, let's get you back to the car. Where'd she go? And back in the house? Yeah, <laughs> she split real quick. He never even tried to uh, to talk to you. Mm -mm, he won't. He'll, he'll he'll talk to me alone. Well, I would suggest that you don't talk to him alone unless oh, you I have don't. somebody there with you. Okay? Either myself, one of our detectives, uh, a counselor. Uh, and he, he's drinking again, too. Yeah, could you tell that? Mm hmm Yeah, he was kind of uh, being very strange. Let's go back. Yeah, he, he said he quit drinking. He didn't do that. He did? Mm hmm That's what he said to you? Oh, yeah. I mean, he promised me everything. You told you, all right? I'm okay. No, he'll want to talk to me later. That's what the problem's going to be. Because he can manipulate me. Here's her, uh, her place, but I don't know. Where's she at? Mm -hmm. Let's see yeah, if we can I'll talk to her. I just wonder how long he's been seeing her. Okay. You and I go. Do we know her name? I don't lose, I think. This one? Yeah. Excuse me, uh, Liz. Go away. Uh, this is Tommy from the TV show Cheaters. Uh, I'd like to uh, talk to you for a minute about uh, the fella that you've been seeing, Mike. What, why would you come out here? Did you not? Did this, you, go ahead. I'm his wife. Who are you? Did you? You know, don't care. Did you know he was married? Excuse me. Come out. It doesn't matter to me. You need to go away. Who, how long have you been seeing him? Can't go and go. That's all right. Let's just let's just end this thing. You're not coming out? No, we need to go away. You should be taken care of at home. Oh, well. 
she has no remorse herself. She just mm -mm. kind of uh, doesn't even care. Mm -mm. Do you even know how long she's been staying here? Um, since we've been on her for since, about three uh, weeks. Three weeks? So, so a while. She sees a lot of other people, but it seems for that he's just been right? seeing her. I don't know how many, since we've been on him, it's been pretty consistent with her. But at, so he pays her, right? Oh, yeah. Following the confrontation, Shannon vows to end the vicious cycle of abuse. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters unveil Shannon's final decision. But now Cheaters welcomes Cameron Spaulding. Cameron discusses the night she confronted her boyfriend and how no disguise could cover up his treachery. Cameron Spaulding, age 24. Cameron returns to disclose how her experience on Cheaters has become a turning point in her life. Okay, when we pulled up and I saw Lewis in his um, Bumblebee outfit, I was like, he's going to the costume party, okay, you know? But then it hit me when I saw the other girl in the Zora outfit. It really hurt because of the fact that I just thought that we were meant to be together. And then, obviously, we weren't. You told me that you're gonna be working late. What the f are you doing? I'm going to a costume party. No, you. you what what you have to go after the man? You with that? Because you didn't want to go to the costume party. Because I didn't want to go to a costume hey, party? No, turn around and look at me. Hey, you said you love me and everything. What the f are you doing? When I found him with the other girl, I just felt this sharp pain in my stomach. It was just like I was just gonna vomit. And then I was just kinda like, no, you're not gonna vomit. You're not gonna wimp out this time. You're gonna confront him and you're gonna say what you wanna say to him. You're gonna make him feel your pain. You're gonna say everything that you want to say to him and to that girl for ruining what you thought was gonna be your perfect life. Tell her right now you don't love her. She know what's all love me and her cool. She know that. She know what's all love me and her so cool. Right. Her Do you back. think that you can Is that pimp what cool means? and you know I'm pop your pimping. collar and then have her and me I'm too? Pimping. How you gonna do all that to me? Huh? You had three months to say something to me. How am I gonna say something to you when we don't even talk? What? What are you That's doing? Right. Butterfly wings on your back. I believe Cheaters is a great opportunity for both women and men to come and, you know, say that, yes, I do have insecurities, but, you know, I just want to see if these insecurities are real or not. You know, why am I feeling this way? Um, I don't think that it's fair for another person to play with your emotions and tell you that they love you and this, that, and the other when they really don't because if they did, they wouldn't cheat on you. I think Cheaters is a wonderful show, a wonderful place for people to come and find out the truth because what we all really want in, tr in the life is the truth. After much struggle, Shannon Oliver has finally forgiven her husband for his indiscretions. And Michael Oliver is now accountable for his whereabouts. Companion Miller claims that her relationship with the suspect was only professional. Still places her trust in cheaters to dig deep. Crystal Laird, age 28, a mental health worker who fears her boyfriend may be losing his mind over another woman. Scott and I met in a club a couple of months ago. I was standing at the bar, I was really bored, and I guess he noticed because he walked over to me and told me I looked bored. We started talking and he asked me to dance, and after we danced we went and sat at a table and we talked for a while and talked about what we wanted out of life, and 
He seemed like somebody I wanted to get to know, so we started dating. In the beginning of the relationship, it was really good. Um, he would call me all the time. I met him every day for lunch. Uh, we never really went to his house. We always came to mine. Uh, we spent pretty much all of our time together. I started to get a little suspicious when we were out at dinner and his phone would ring and he would always get up from the table to talk. He said it was a business, but he's a courier, so I don't see how that would go together. Uh, we always go to my house. He's never invited me to his house. He's never even told me where he lives. He says he doesn't have a home phone. I can only call him on his cell phone. So mainly it's the little things like that that would make me suspicious. The reason that I think he's hiding where he lives is because I think he has a wife. I think she obviously lives there with him. I think probably he has kids. Um, I think she's the one who calls him when we're out at dinner, and that's why he has to get up from the table. If I find out that Scott has been cheating on me or has a wife and he's been lying to me, it'll be a long time before I can trust anybody ever again. I don't know if I'll ever trust anybody again. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Scott Skipworth, age 44. A security guard suspected of protecting another woman's identity. Investigation day two. Cheater sleuths are geared up and ready for action as they cautiously make their way down a dirt road to a mysterious home, located by tracing a call from the suspect to Crystal. As it turns out, the home is just around the corner from complainant Laird's own residence. After a short while, an unknown woman is observed sweeping the front porch of the mysterious residence. Cheater's PIs are very careful not to jump to any conclusions this early in the investigation and press for more hard evidence. Out of nowhere, the suspect is suddenly seen lumbering toward the front of the house. Cheaters crews back off to avoid unwanted detection. The large cowboy makes his way up the porch stairs to the unknown female, and the two engage in what appears to be a quick kiss on the cheek. Cheaters watchdogs realize that the unknown female could merely be a relative or close family friend and press on for further signs of foul play. Investigation Day 7. Unable to enter the premises and finding it difficult to gather any information regarding events inside the house, detectives decide to get proactive, sending an investigator to the front door to do a little undercover work with a hidden camera. Posing as a newspaper salesman, the detective uses his savvy to uncover some interesting facts concerning the case. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, how are you? We uh, are offering a complimentary weekend edition of the Dallas Morning News. Okay, well, we're offering it to the man in the house this weekend. Okay. And just thought maybe y'all might be interested. Is your husband here? No, he's not here. What's his name, just in case you're not here? Scott. Scott? Well, I'll catch him this weekend, maybe next weekend. Okay, okay thank Great. you. Thank you. One hour later, staked out on the road in front of the farmhouse, cheaters' cameras see Ms. Laird's vehicle approaching on the horizon. With suspect Skipworth alone behind the wheel, detectives move into position and clearly spot the two cozied up next to each other on the porch swing. Looking like a picture of married bliss, the two cuddle together for quite some time. It is obvious that the suspect is engaging in a pattern of deception as revealed by a phone call to Crystal just hours before. Hey, what are you doing? Right in the middle of trying to get this report put together. I'm, I'm really kind of busy. Can, can I call you back in just now? Let me finish this report and I'll get right back to you. No, you can't. Look, do you have a wife or girlfriend or something? Because you always do this. You're already wanting to get off the phone. It, it's not that. I mean, uh, I just I just don't have time right now. I've got to get this done. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll call you back in a little bit. All right. Cheaters' troops, possessing overwhelming evidence of the suspect's mendacity, decide to close the investigation and move to personally verify complainant Laird's suspicions. After the break, the confrontation.
Now that the truth about Scott's marriage is out, Cheaters tracks down Crystal to disclose the findings. Crystal's suspicions are well-founded, but nothing can prepare her for the raw images. You were telling me a few minutes ago in the car as we were driving over here that uh, you live a couple exits from here. Yes. Yeah. And you thought it was strange that we were coming out here. Yes. Well, we brought you out here for a couple different reasons. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, um, I have some things I want to show you. See if we can get you up to speed on where we're at with your investigation. Let me take you through the surveillance, show you what I have, and I think you'll find it pretty amazing. On this day of investigation, Detective Gomez tracked the numbers that you gave him to this house. As we watched the house, this unknown female came out and was sweeping. Scott comes walking around the corner. He walks up, communicates with this woman. They go in the house. We needed to find out who this woman was. We couldn't find any marriage certificates on this guy. So our detective posed as working for the newspaper to sell them newspaper subscription. Up to the house? He goes up to the house with a hidden camera. He's talking to her about the newspaper. She said her husband wasn't home right now, but would be home in an hour or two. At that point, we realize that they are married. And he has been lying to you. Obviously, you made a smart move by wanting to know the truth. It's because he lives right here, right across the street. That's the house that I just showed you in the surveillance. Let's go ahead and load up get you in the vehicle. Okay, let's take it down. How far up? Take a left right in here, Billy. How far up? Okay, just pull in and park right here. Okay, I'm cutting off. Come up here, go, man. Excuse me. Hi, can I speak to you for a minute? My name's Tommy Grant from the TV show Cheaters. What's your name? Terry. You live here with your husband, Scott? Scott's your husband? Is oh, he, that's my boyfriend. Is he inside? Yes, really. Oh, here's Scott now. Hey, honey. What are you doing here? Did you know he was having an affair with this woman? How are you doing, Scott? I'm Tommy from the TV show Cheaters. Wait, wait, you know this woman? I met her once. What? Coming around. No, I met him three months ago at a club. No. Yeah. We went to Mardi Gras together. Back off for a Mardi second. Mardi Gras? What did it? Wait, They've been wait, wait. dating for the last three months. Here's your little... Well, there you go. There's Mardi Gras. What do you have to say, Scott? You drove her around in my car that you had to borrow? Oh, yeah. By the way, this is her that car. That is though. my car that you've been driving your little wife around in. You told me that was a company car. Give me my keys, by the way. Scott, what do you have to say, buddy? I don't have anything to say. You met me once, but yeah, you have my car. <laughs> and how do you explain this? What's this? Coming up, the conclusion. And how do you explain this? What's this? How long have y'all been married? Four years. Four years. Four years. Do you have any children? No. So are you really starting up a company or have you just been lying about that too? Yeah, was this the business trip in Houston? When we went down there, we went on down to Galveston. That doesn't look like business to me. I screwed up, but I think it's something that I need to deal with between them. Dude, you, you ain't no dealing anything with me. I just want my car and I want you to stay out of my life. 
this the guy you married? Is this the guy you... He comes to my house every night and plays with my daughter and tells her all of this wonderful stuff. And then I guess you call him. That's when he goes outside to use the phone. And then comes home to you. God, I hope you at least took a shower first. Sick bastard. I'm done here. You know what? You take a picture and stick it up. What are you gonna do, Scott? You just, is this your way to get out of the No, it's, it's a whole story that, that y'all don't know anything about. And I'll talk to somebody. Because right now you don't look too good. I don't feel too good. When I met her, yeah, we were what, in the what house. bull crap is he talking now? And I really did fall in love with her when I met her. And unfortunately, I didn't want to give up that easy. But I got in a situation that I thought I was getting out of, and I can't give up that easy, and I got caught between two. And I really did care for you. Uh, you don't know what that means, obviously. The fact is, when you told her, no, I'm not married, there's nobody. When you heard her open her heart to you and say, where are you going? Let me ask you one quick question. Three months ago, were y'all split up? You weren't split up? So he's lying to us now here. Of course, he lies about everything, obviously. Well, I'm sorry for what happened, but it was important that you found out the truth as well. I hated to do it this way. You be careful. Where are you going? Oh, I want you by the time I get home from work tomorrow. Good job. At least she's smart. Well, his lies and stupidity. This is where he, uh... He, my daughter's stuff is like all in the back seat there and she's just sitting there driving around with it. Drive too. Well, I think you got what you deserve. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a date. I'm going to meet my police officer now, so I'm not even going to let this affect me. I mean, it will, but not that much, so. After the confrontation, Crystal reclaims her dignity and her car. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheater shares how Crystal's faith and love endures. But now, Cheaters presents Curtis Jackson. Curtis recently appeared on Cheaters, deceiving his girlfriend, Marsha. Curtis Jackson, age 23. Curtis claims weakness of the flesh and offers a somber apology to his ex-girlfriend, Marsha. Well, the first thing I thought when I saw the cameras was, was cheaters, because I knew I was wrong. But the thing was, you know what I'm saying, I was really still in denial until the whole situation really just hit me. And then I felt like, you know, hey, you know, you made a mistake, you know, you better go ahead and handle it. But, you know what I'm saying, I necessarily didn't handle it the right way. This this chick I just met. Get out the car. I knew it was set up from the thought. Hey, you better get that camera out of my face. What you doing, Curtis? What, what you doing? All right, we ain't finna make no sense. What are you doing? Is, is this getting your business off the ground? Well, the thing that I didn't say that night that I wanted to say specifically was that I was wrong. That was, that was the biggest thing, you know. I just really just threw it out there. And what I should have had been telling her was, hey, I'm wrong. I really apologize. I really didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Cause you know, you really don't do people like that. Cause things like that do come back. And you know, and I really wouldn't wish that on anybody. I really wouldn't. And hurting her feelings really was the last thing that I wanted to do. You know, the first thing that should have came out of my mouth was I apologize. I'm wrong for doing this. I shouldn't be here. That was, should have been the first words came out of my mouth. So keep talking what? 
I'm gonna need security to protect me here. I'm gonna need security. No, come on, Marsha. I'm gonna need Marcia. security. What? What you I'm say? Gonna, oh, you ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna lose a wink of sleep. 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 You think you gonna clown me? No, you the one doing the clown and you in the car. No, no, no. You in the car get some You in the car get some the main thing that I got out of the situation was that, you know, be straight up with whoever you with, you know, be honest, you know, if you want to see other people, let it be known that you want to see other people, you know, and the thing is that weakness of the flesh, that's the biggest thing, flesh is weak, you know, and I got caught slipping, thing was, you know, like I said, she kept approaching me, kept approaching me, and then, you know, I said no a couple of times, you know what I'm saying? Then started talking to her, then, you know, tried to break it off again, and then started right back again. And then the thing was that I got out of it that I really need to just, if I'm gonna be with somebody, I need to be with that person, be open and honest with that person. That's what I should have been in the first place. I shouldn't let somebody come in and wreck the relationship that I did have set. You know, it taught me as far as, you know, hey, if you're going into this monogamy, be monogamous. You know, if you're gonna just date other people, just date people, just date. Stand by your man and would do whatever was necessary to save their relationship. For some financial consideration. Cheaters to act on his behalf. Marvin Keel, age 19. A grocery store stalker with anxiety that his girlfriend may be filling her shelves with other men. Like when I met Keisha, it was like it was through my cousin, a family member. And she put me down, and she hooked me up, and I was, I was cutting for her because I really liked her when she came over my house. And I mean, she just to me, she looks good. I don't know what how to describe it. To me, she looks real good. So I was real attracted to that. And then we, I say after that, we went strong for about seven or eight months. This last month has been a. Uh, a waste of a month and I mean my my feelings for her have grew real strong and she was talking about getting an apartment I was going to move in with her and help her out on some of the bills and she wanted me to help her out and I mean everything just went downhill now so I don't know if everything would go as planned. My cousin told me that that she had been receiving numbers and things and since I don't live with her I couldn't just actually say it was true or not. So I was going by the trust factor again, and I was saying, I asked her, she was like, no, I'm not getting any numbers, so I was cool. I, I think she's lying, because I, I don't feel the same anymore. My, my attitude towards her has changed, and her attitude has changed also. So I, I mean, I really think she's being dishonest with me right, right now. My, my feelings for her right now are very, very strong, like I was saying, and I actually want this relationship to work because I, I believe I see something in the future for us. But I mean, if it doesn't work, I can't stop it. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Keisha Dennis, age 18, a student suspected of skipping class and consorting with other schoolboys. Investigation day five, Cheaters PIs patiently wait at the suspect's house for signs of action when a mysterious cruiser pulls up and parks in front of the residence. A young man gets out, skips over to the other side of the car and opens the door for his passenger. Cheaters watchdogs are disappointed, but not surprised when suspect Keisha's to her waiting chauffeur. Companion Renfro puts his foot on the gas and Cheaters PIs keep a magnifying glass on their every move. After stopping at a nearby store, Ms. Dennis hops out to run a few errands while Renfro patiently waits in his machine. Moments later, the two are on the move again, leaving the Cheaters force wondering what lies ahead on this long road of deceit. Ms. Dennis obviously gets what she wants as she sends her gopher into a convenience store for some soda pop to quench her parched throat. 
After completing all of his assigned tasks, Companion Renfro finally gets a short playtime break, as Ms. Dennis allows him to stop at a lovely Dallas park. The commanding princess guides her Lothario over to a cozy park bench where they initially take up a friendly distance. Suspect Dennis apparently has little respect for her loyal and absent boyfriend, as confirmed in a conversation earlier in the day. Please. Uh, no, I ask you want to go to the movies this weekend. Yeah. You, you got something to do? Yeah, I'm going to go to the mall with him. Okay, can I join y'all at the mall? Well, I'm my boyfriend at the mall with me. Well, I'll call you back when you get the treat. Okay. All right. But after spending over an hour on the grassy knoll, Renfro starts to make some headway, and suspect Dennis finally begins to warm up. Cheater's detectives can feel the tension building between the two and follow them back to Dennis's residence, thinking that the coup de grace may be forthcoming. But when he pulls up to his lady's castle, the young knight is stymied by what appears to be friends and neighbors at her doorstep. Renfro will have to wait another day to make his move. Investigation Day 9. Cheater's sleuths sense the investigation is coming to a close when Renfro stalks up to Dennis's home once again to complete what he started the day before. With school books in tow and apparently full of anticipation, the suspect hops into companion Renfro's cruiser for another afternoon filled with fun and games. As it turns out, Renfro is not particularly creative in his choice of romantic locales, as he takes her back to the same park as before, possibly hoping to hit the daily double. He saddles up next to her at another park bench, and within minutes, he makes his move, casually placing his arm around her neck. Their body language is now unmistakably romantic. Suspect Dennis then makes a feeble attempt at studying, but Renfro proves to be too much of a distraction, and they eventually head back off toward his waiting car. A long goodbye smooch in the car seals the deal for Cheater's watchdogs, and they decide it's best to return to Marvin and end the charade. After the break, the confrontation. Keisha shows her true colors during the illicit conduct captured in the surveillance, prompting Cheaters to inform Marvin of her betrayal. Marvin must remain focused as he reviews the condemning footage. You were telling me earlier that you feel like you're in the middle of a jigsaw puzzle. Somewhat, because everything is still a mystery. Yeah. You know, I don't know what's going on, so I don't know what to think. As you requested, our detectives went out, gathered some information for us, and on these three different days, she was telling you one thing, yeah. but doing another. On You're this right. day of investigation, this fella picked up your girlfriend from school. <laughs> this was the day you told me that her mom was picking her up from school. Well, she didn't pick her up from school. This fella did. But we followed him back to her house. Yeah. Now, it may have just been friends, I don't know, but she's kind of got her arm around him. He just simply drops her off, mm -hmm. hugs her by. Not a lot went on there. You're right. Three days later, same guy, same car. She told you she was going to the mall with her cousin. Yeah. And taking this dress right here to get altered. Yeah, I remember the dress. She, she didn't go with your cousin. She went with this fella again. Now, she dropped the dress off, and they went over to this park. It seems like they could be alone here. Well, they were there about two hours in this park. <laughs> I see. She's lying to you. Uh, yep, yeah, that's right. what it's too. They're holding hands. This is like a new relationship that's starting, yeah, is what I see here. On this day of investigation, we followed him back over to this park. They spent a few hours here. He's got his arm around her. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, just, that's just wrong. Yeah. They're walking along, his arm around her, gets back in the car, and then here it is. They reach over it. Oh, they kiss. Touches, huh? They made out in the car for a few minutes, and then she went inside. 
obviously there's something else going on. Well, you gotta be. She's lying to you, she's deceiving you, and in my book, cheating on you. Mm, which is true. Well, my detective's following him right now, and he cheats with him. You wanna talk to him? Yeah, I actually do. Okay, let's get loaded up. All right. And we'll let you say your piece to her. Get it out, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> this is Grand Gomez. Tell me where you're at. They're in a the store? Okay. We're just gonna, you bring us right in, okay? Your girlfriend's right down the hall here. You all right, buddy? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Let's just get it done. <laughs> Hey. Keisha, hey, you man. want to explain what you've been up to? Hey. You just going to walk away that, from man? him? Oh. Oh, hello. I'm Who Tommy Grant from the TV show Who Cheaters. That? This dude that been doing what you ain't been doing. Why hadn't you just oh, stepped up and told him how you felt? Shoot, he ain't been around. You ain't been coming around. I ain't been coming around. Seriously. I have phone hey. conversations of you. Making excuses not for him, sir, so he so couldn't come around. He should have got the picture. I should have got oh, the you picture. Just, you just picture. couldn't tell him? I ain't no picture to it. You have to string him out like that? The poor guy has feelings for you. You even tell him, I have feelings for you. Are you kidding me? He ain't told me he had no feelings for me. Say, man. Come on now. Say, you already know the deal. You know what I'm saying? Where he, maybe who was he? I don't even know him. You're not supposed to know him. I'd mean, be different if I was talking to your homeboy now, huh? I'm yeah, just doing be, well, I'm be just a lot. Doing, hey. I'm just doing Coming up, the conclusion. Why you didn't get the pictures? I know, Why I know. Why you get say, the pictures? Why you just couldn't get straight to the point? He stabbed people around the bush, man. Did he know you have a, a boyfriend? Yeah, he knew. He knew all the time? I ain't gonna tell, I ain't gonna tell him no lie, he knew. <laughs> Go through all How are you doing? to get answers, facts. I'm Tommy Grant from the TV show Cheater. You ever hear of it? Yeah, I heard of it, I ain't never seen it. How long have you been hanging out with Keisha? A couple weeks. Really? Did you know that uh, she had a boyfriend? Yeah, she told me, but she was basically. Oh, well, which one do you want to talk about? Do you want to oh, really? prove it? What? Oh, really? What's my thing? What's it? The sad thing is, she hadn't informed her boyfriend that it was over. That ain't one of my business. I mean, they've been, they're still sleeping together. Have you been yeah, sleeping with her? Man. You been hitting it at all or what? Hey, man, that's confidential information, man. I mean, but you know my feelings for you strong, so it ain't got to come to this point. You know what I'm saying? What did you ever say, uh, Keisha? Uh, man, why? you should have been through that. No, nah, I shouldn't have been under no hammer. No, something if you don't open up your mouth and say something. Hey, man, you should have been through that. And how am I going to know something if you don't open months. up your mouth and say something? Man, yeah, we've been nine months. You should have been through that. I mean, I got a lot of footage of you and her together. Putting your arms around her, hugging her, kissing her, hanging out at the park with her. It was a park. Ain't no park around here, man. Ain't been no park. Oh, yeah, you've been to the park. Uh, Doing homework with her. I got footage of you kissing her right in your car. Man, I need to see this. Where this footage is? Show me. You don't believe it? No, I don't believe nothing you got to say. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Actually, let me get, let me ask you a question. So, what do you man. think? Man? I, don't I mean, know you're my guy. So whatever you say. Hey, man. I don't even want to talk about it right here. Can y'all take me to my house? You want her to come with you? Yeah. Yeah. Keisha, come on. Let's come with us. I think you're done, Now They're going to go talk. Listen, man. I apologize for them. You know what I'm saying? But I should feel that you need to give a little more attention to what you meant to Following the confrontation, Marvin evaluates his limited options. At the end of the show, Cheaters unveils how Marvin plans to deal with the matter. But first, Cheaters presents Jonathan Shaw, 
a young musician exposed for the infidelity he displayed toward his live-in girlfriend, Kyra. Jonathan Shaw, age 20. Jonathan returns to Cheaters to discuss his astonishment at the lengths to which his former girlfriend went. Well, when the crew came in, I was taking a shower, and Kyra just busted in, flopped the curtain open. I was super pissed right away. I mean, it's a total invasion of my privacy. You know, I mean, that's uncalled for in any situation. I don't know why a cameraman should be filming me in the shower, ever, you know? Who the hell is he? What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Oh my god! I got Tina's in here. How could you do this to me after all this time I've been taking care of you? How could you do this to me? Oh my god, get out! How could you do this to me? How could you do this to me? Hey, you're my friend! I was I was just really angry. I mean I was a little hurt that she threw the guitar off. I mean, more angry than hurt, but still, that guitar means a lot to me. It was a gift from my dad before he died. And I learned how to play on that guitar. It just had a lot of sentimental value. And she just had no respect for that at all. Trashed it. Come on, don't touch him. Come here. You. You what the are you do now? Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Get to me. Yeah, uh, technically. What I did was cheating, but, you know, at the time, it, it seemed okay. It seemed like the right way to go about things, you know. But, yeah, in the end, I guess it was cheating. Where are you going? Come here. Come here. The guitar? Give it to me. This is what I think about your music. You. <laughs> You ducks. Baby. You sucks anyways. My dad gave me this. I don't. Food. Your dad did. Get out of here. You're. Come I can't on. kill you. I can't You're better believe than that. It. You're better than that. I can't believe it. I can't believe yeah. it. You right? I can't believe it. Um, I don't know if it'll help restore my reputation. You know, because people have seen what they saw. And I'm probably not going to change their minds about it. But as far as I'm concerned, how I feel, you know, I'll feel a lot better just knowing that I had my chance to explain things. And that's all I really need. Left confused and hurt by the manner in which he was treated by suspect Dennis, Marvin Keel sensed that he needed to make a major change in his life. He promised himself to no longer consort with trashy women like those his loving mother always warned him about. Marvin decided to join a local singles group where he reported that this particular avenue has opened up a whole new world of classy and trustworthy females. Keisha Dennis talked briefly with Cheater's producers and admitted that she did not mean to hurt such a sweet man. She did, however, state that it was just too tempting to pull the wool over the eyes of someone so trusting and gullible. After pondering the excruciating pain that she caused Mr. Keel, Keisha decided to contact him personally to apologize for her misguided deeds. As for companion Renfro, he didn't seem to care about Mr. Keel's plight whatsoever. 